yeah, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome into round 16 of the 2024 Moto Options Supercross Championship live here on Star Your Systems TV. I'm Kellen Brower. He's Andrew Wood. We're back. We're, we're back. back. You were gone last week, man. The championships were all decided, but yeah. you're back this week. Stuck on the airplane and in airports, but we're back. Sad. Ready to watch him racing. Super sad. But hey, we're here. No <laughs> titles to worry about. Just a lot of fun and some good racing, hopefully. Zara wants to know who the F let Dale Earnhardt in the booth. <laughs> do for, do are, for Dale. Are we offering free rides or? Free rides. To free anyone, rides available anyone who wants them. to uh, Andrew Wood. No, great to have you uh, back in studio. Uh, we got 250 West here tonight. We got 450 action here from Denver. But as we saw last week, Braden Carter clinched the 450 title. Yeah. Uh, the week before that in Nashville, uh, Seth Shirley already clinched the 250 West title. So we just yeah. got a race tonight. Like we got a good old fashioned just, race. Just a good old fashioned race, just like the 14 before that were. But you know, uh, <laughs> now that there's no stress on Braden Carter, and we'll see what he can do. Probably just keep adding to that all time win total, and it's gonna be a good night. See oh. some action in the LCQs. It's gonna be everything we've always wanted oh it is gonna be a good night here we are a mile high in denver colorado <laughs> this is gonna be a ton of fun to cover this race we'll uh, take a look at the qualifying sheets here now we'll pull up our intermission screen and check this out Braden carter looks like he's gone fastest at a 57 234 oh it updated uh oh and 250 east Reigning right. champion. Rouse's balls are 57023. Little and solely dropping yeah, the hammer too. At the buzzer. Leclerc goes 572 as well. And uh dang, these are some tight times up top. Yeah. Look at those UIDs, dude. 42K. I know, dude. It's sad. It's out of control. Is there anybody still racing? Uh Jeremy Smith has a lower UID than me. Podani Smith is lower. And D Devin Davis. Davis is just barely <clears throat> lower than mine. And D Mills is and D Mills ski Skiabro. What beats everyone though? Emails beats everybody. There's like I August. think I saw like a 47 or something, 46 in the 250 class. So we'll have to check it that out when we get there. But I like that A Wood is the yee to my haul. Yeah. Oh, dude, I right. went to Yeehaw Brewery in Nashville. It was so sick Sunday. <laughs> it was just like played a bunch of cornhole. It's got the the old smoky distillery there. It was so good. Oh, yeah. Then we went to the one in Knoxville the very next day. And this place is cool, dude. They're super fun. So yeah, Nashville. The yee to my haul. Yeah. Yeah, to my heart. Nashville right. was a great time. That's what 450 Supercross looks like. The West, though, Seth Shirley up Shocker. on a 58.8 over Alec Horn, Lucas Bruin, Tyler Ooh. Show, and Emmett Sun. So, uh, perfect season's done. Got second in Nashville, so it's not a perfect season anymore. But nobody on the West has beaten Seth yet because in Nashville, he was the top West rider. So, does that little like perfect season continue tonight? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, look at that four tenths faster than the rest of the guys has dominated all year, wrapped up the title early. It's just like another race for him. And honestly, like barring like a great ride by maybe Stevenson or, or someone not to any of the other guys like knock him down. But I really don't know like what you can do. Seth Shirley is on. He's at the point where he can move up and win 450 mains. We've seen that and win 450 races so he's just kind of the class of the field right now and i just don't think these guys have much to fight him for yeah seth is on an another level for sure and he is also going for the all-time wins record tonight on 10 uh Rasmus balls are also on 10 jeremy smith also on 10 but seth is the only guy here tonight that could become the all-time 250 supercross wins holder yep. and he certainly would like to do so we'll quickly run through the standings because as we mentioned Braden carter 55 points on Colby Eaglin, so he's already wrapped up this title two rounds early. Uh, not really many fights either. I mean, we got six Third points between Leclerc and Hubbard. Yeah. Hubbard might want to get up there and, and knock Leclerc back a spot. Um, but yeah, behind that, it's kind of really up in the air. We haven't seen Seabolt for a little bit. Uh, so we'll look at 250 West and see how that's shaping up. Good fight for second, though. Heilman and Stevenson, two points between them. Even for fifth, Tyler Show and Austin Schaefer, two points between them as well. So even though Seth has got this title wrapped up, there's still some stuff to play for. Yeah, and I mean, if you're kind of a guy that's that's new, 57,000 UID, I thought Cashwood's 49 was crazy. So if you're off, <laughs> holy, holy shit, that's like a 10K over what I thought it was going to be. Uh so if you're Austin Schaefer, you know, you're like, okay, maybe this is, let's try to hold on to my top five in West, you know, probably first or second full season, like going out there and trying to, you know, do a career best for you. All these other guys, yeah, they might not have a chance to even get close to Shirley, but they want to be able to have their best finish and then compete with that next year. So 
Um, I think it'll be really fun to keep an eye on Heilman Stevenson and then Schaefer and Shao tonight. Shall we? Shall? Shall we? I think Shao, but I, I'm not too sure. Maybe someone in chat can Shao. Shao, Shao. Ben Nerona, 57,000 as well. And uh, yeah, these, Out of control. these UIDs are ridiculous. Kind of sad. Sad. Uh, sad how high up some of these ridiculous UIDs are going. All right, let's jump in and take a look at this racetrack real quick here. We'll try to preview it quickly. I think I just got booted from the server. So What's we'll, new? We'll reconnect. Um, but yeah, overhead view of this track here tonight, very, very similar to Indy, right? Yes. So pretty uh, similar vibes. We've got the back and forth across the start, maybe the real only difference. Yeah, tight whoop section that now goes right. Uh, so those guys are going to be either jumping or whatever. Well, that's, be a rut I mean, there. Nashville obviously had the whoops that went left, but <clears throat> India yeah. was like the same exact That's story. true. Yeah, the big the big yeah. bull turns, jumping across the thing. Try to show off this track here real quick. A Wood can maybe I am, through it. Yeah, I'm super excited about the long rhythm too. Maybe see if the sand section plays a part. So right here, seems like uh, off the rip, maybe triple, triple, but then probably a quad double there coming across. This is interesting too. I would assume maybe people are going over instead of going on off and then single into the face. We got a right 90 that doesn't normally uh, have too much, but that inside looks open. Going on, off, ooh, triple ooh. here. Kellen is all sorts of sketchy, but might give him a good run. Can't triple on. So we got a big line here. We got double quad or triple on, off, quad, triple. So there's double, quad, quad, double. So we like that. Big jumps, big lines. Oh, Bobby big lines all day. Bobby big lines. Call Jump in for a show. Corner in also for show. He's going fast. Lane. There's no money. Right. Look at this inside triple line, very jumpable looking whoops. <laughs> they are jumpable. I just very suck. jumpable. Kellen's just well, surely or Schaefer's on his tenth UID. Kellen's on his tenth Coors Light. So <laughs> truth, we're, we're getting, getting loose. I barbecued tonight before the race, and I like, can't you can't be outside though. in the sun barbecuing and not have a beer. Big, uh, big shout out Idaho Dirt Biker for uh, subbing up and blocking Sheesh. my whole screen right there. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. We got a follow as well. I can't even see nothing because I'm trying to watch the screen. Versus watching the TV, and which that's is where a it popped tougher. up. Yeah, yeah. But we got we got some lines. We got some guys that could quad across right there. We got, yeah. So we got two four four two in the long rhythm, three on off quad triple. There's a lot of different options available out there tonight. That's the point that we're trying to get across. The here. point that top rhythm at the top of your screen right now is gonna be, in my opinion, the deciding factor for a lot of these races. Uh, the way that these guys we've seen making a lot of mistakes in big long technical rhythm sections uh, all year long so gonna be Those cool the hotline js4 what do we got yeah put in a heater bro Come show on, off that Jeremy. sexy dude look at that kit coming out, of, coming out of marmora new jersey white and black with the gold rims on that beautiful little yellow honeybee looking uh -oh. bumblebee that's what okay. we're that's what we're calling so going quad outside out quad up what else we got here? Is he going to quad out of this corner? Oh, Yeet. you know it, baby. Oh, that's a Bobby big line if I've oh. ever seen one. So we're going on off. Going, going inside, over. on, yeah, off. Can on probably on. go over from the inside as well, but yeah. that lets you for a triple in. It carries your momentum for this big triple on. Look how big that is. 450 guys having to huck that. And then, yeah, big, old big quad, quad almost over the bars. Triple out. Can triple to the inside there too. Make some passes, make some stuff happen. I think that'll be fun to watch both classes. You know, 250s probably can't get that triple on. Wait, JS4 is racing the BMX World Championship next week? All right, let's go. I knew he rode bicicletas. I knew, well, I knew he grew up racing BMX. I didn't know that it would it had turned uh, to this level again. So way to go, JS4, if he's out there giving it a go. Oh, I tried to do the little mad skills yeah. for us there. What a ripper. What a ripper. Yeah, J Spore is awesome. Now, after that great lap, let's watch Kellen. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to jump over here gonna... and then just go. We'll cut Holy the track. crap. Was that Pierce Brown on yeah, the sticks? Yeah, was that Pierce Brown cutting the track? hey -o. Oh, man. Hey, oh, you were 100,000% framing that quad. <laughs> I definitely was. You, I were, was going to... you were maybe going to clip it like the dude that tried to jump the house and just. Nose pick it. Yeah. Not a good look for sure. All right, let's get out of all this nonsense and get into the racing action. Get out here. of here. Get out of here, bro. For, uh, 250 Heat 1 coming up here in Denver. So excited to see how that shapes up. Uh, I don't know if Seth will be in the first. Yeah, I guess if he's fast to qualify, he should be. We'll see. 
We shall see. How is everybody doing tonight is the real question. How's the chat feeling? We feeling good, chat? Everybody hyped? Chatting it up. Anyone? No. Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? How many people we got in here? Buford. Buford. I don't know what that is. No. 90. Look at that. Freaking championship Let's gets go. locked up. Let's go, AMD Designs. Oh, yeah. Did you ever, uh, you left me on red earlier? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I, I, I have can, to look. I can uh, reach out for you. I, I have to look. I don't want to throw him under the bus. So No, no, no I'll, I'll reach out. Oh, you just got money like that. You just don't even know. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> just don't even know. Stop it. But yeah, I might have gotten that, that, you know. Stop it. That wire transfer might have hit, but. Stop it. It's like Otani doesn't know if yeah. five million is gone. Well, I don't. I would know sixteen million dollars is gone from my bank account. To be honest, not when you're making freaking seventy, eighty a year. He's not. He it's was making deferred. like he was making no 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 before Angels he was making like thirty two or thirty six from his arbitration and he was making like fifty mil off from like Hugo Boss and New Balance. So, I mean, if you got eighty mil in your bank account and you just really you're just swiping that freaking black card. You what? No one's looking. You freaking swiping black cards. Yeah, what? I swiped my black card last night, actually. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Turn into that stream real quick. <laughs> Woo! Let's uh, get back to the racing. Action All right. Here Shirley already Denver. clinched the title. Yes, outdoors is going to be amazing. Going to be hot and sweaty in here. It will, it's already get some more special guests. We got B Lars wants to come in. B Lars wants to come in. We got you know we can get Volan back in. Doc Smith gonna come out. I mean Doc might. I mean, I don't know. Get we'll the boys. Get who Doc else? Who, who else wants to come in here? We'll get Lewis Phillips. Oh, dude, I'm trying to get Lewis to come in. He dude. would probably last He'd maybe so a heat annoyed. race. We probably would get through the intro and talking about the qualifying and standings. He'd be like, this is stupid. I don't care. I don't care. This Here's is the, the dumbest thing The problem with Lewis ever. is that he played the game at one point. Like, really? So, yeah, so he knows. I don't understand. You know what's crazy is that we have freaking weed in here for like a full stream. Twice. Twice. Full stream. He yeah. hung out. Lewis is probably going to be greater than thou. I think so. But we'll, He's just we'll a... See. Yeah, let's get Mathis. Certified in, right? hater. Can we get Mathis? Jason Johnson is not allowed... <laughs> in this household. <laughs> that is breaking and entering. B and E, bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs ring. Yep. <laughs> bacon and bacon eggs. eggs ring. Alright, here we go, folks. It's the first oh. race of the night. 250 West. Heat number one. 30 card sideways. The revs are up. Let's go racing in Denver. Eight drop. And a little bit <laughs> of soiree into the first turn. Guys collecting each other. 25 on the cutoon? Guys pushing out wide and it's Dylan Delaire, is that Tommy's oh, brother? Oh, poor Going guy. Down. Rush for Mount Rushmore, Cash Woods. That's coming from a tweet that Rush and I had Rush going back and forth last week. Not even close, dude. Jesse Furtado takes over the race lead, though, from Radiant Decals. Had a fun chat with Grant Harlan this past weekend about Rush Chapman and uh, the fact that he was stirring up the drama on Twitter. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I saw that I saw that uh, that thread, and it was pretty... It was pretty ridiculous, though, that Rush and Grant and other people even think that Rush is close. Because, like, come on. Like, me and Rush, we're boys. We fall, played together, whatever. It's like, you're not even close, dude. Like, I don't <laughs> It's just, come on. 17th you're, all-time in career wins. You're not, not, you're not, not that guy, pal. Yeah, but you want to be top four. You're okay. not that guy. You're not that guy. All right. Battle for the lead is cooking. Cash Woods is trying to get around Furtado, and Furtado blows the rut. Cash blows Woods it. is trying to pull up alongside. He kind of messes up the exit of the rut. Now Tyler Show's getting into the mix. Yeah, Show got whipped in the face by Woods. Look at Woods from the outside jumping, showing us the outside line oh. early, what that could do. Look at those guys almost coming together. Woods, I thought, was going to make it or make the pass if he had a clean run out of the sand, but he's not able to, and the three behind these guys are close as well. But Woods is going to look at to come up right on side. Gosh dang it. Oh. Come right up side of him. Put it on the SMX words. come page, baby. Come down the inside, Furtado's trying to hold Cash Woods, and Woods almost goes what? OTB, <laughs> saves it, and now Jesse Furtado makes a big mistake, and Woods is going to pull back. He's got Stevenson on the 12 up the inside trying to make the move, and he will do so as Woods falls back to third, and right behind them is Jake Spies as well. We've got seven riders still nose to tail at the front of this thing. 
This is a good fight. Yeah, look at these. So many guys just uh, front to back here. Is that a new bike for Stevenson? I thought oh. he was normally white and blue as he goes up the inside, unable oh, to make it, and lays it over. It over. Gonna watch a lot of riders go by. Now he goes from first to fifth, or second to fifth. Looks like a staggered Ooh. start when they're going down, how close these guys Dang. are. That was tight there, and uh, he's gonna hold on to third, I believe, or his fourth, actually. So now Woods is back on Furtado for the race lead, and Ooh, he's gonna quad over. Oh! oh! Yard sale looking like me on the parade lap as Jake Spees now moves up into the two spot. He is trying to close that gap down on Furtado. <laughs> Maverick Snyder moves up to third with Nerona in fourth. Evan Vanderkoy fifth, and Tucker Zimmerman is in sixth right here. Logan Mortberg's rider, hashtag broken arm, in parentheses, T. Jimmy, whatever that means. And we got a new leader. Jake Spies goes to the front. Jesse Furtado, a mistake. And the 216 is Spies now takes over the race lead for District Designs. Yeah, Spies just got by him, and just like that, look how fast he's trying to put a gap on the rest of these guys. First to second, and second to third. Pretty big gaps here, as we see in this long shot down the whoop section. Spies, no problem getting through there, and gets a nice tight line around that corner. That's going to be a problem for those guys trying to, uh, when they are blitzing, trying to stop there. Spieth comes around, leads lap three onto lap four, halfway through this heat race here, and uh, he's trying to just kind of run away with this. No real competition now that he got out front. And sometimes that's just how it is. You uh, get off to a little bit of a rough start, but then you know you have the speed, and once you're up there, it's all yours. And see that little bit of lag? So the server might be having issues just like... At least two weeks ago, I think. Yeah, uh, we've Boulder had a couple had issues with the server of late. Hopefully, it's not that. And maybe Spies is just on that McDonald's Wi Fi. Could be. Jesse Furtado, though, is under Whoa. pressure. Ben Narona trying to make a pass. Instead, he's going to have Vanderkoy trying to quad up alongside of him. Vanderkoy with the quad quad down the inside to double the inside and make that pass. Narona gets hit from behind. Tyler Show goes down. And now we got a three rider battle for second. Furtado has just been in a battle this entire heat race. We still have two minutes and a lap left to go. Evan Vanderkoy, Ev move, trying to make the move into second place. But Furtado holding strong and looking good, battling it out with this duo that's giving him the heat. Yeah, I like Ev move. Uh, or Furtado kind of blocked that inside. Oh, Look at that. Dooleys! Wheel to wheel, almost touch tips right there. Nerona goes up the inside and blows it, maybe through too big of a whip, trying to get saucy next to Evmoof. Evmoof goes through the quad over, going to case the crap out of it. He loses a spot to Nerona, and Nerona is now on the back of Furtado, and he's looking spicy right here. Look at this. Uh, see what happens as they come into this 90. This is really where the racetrack, uh, kind of all of it comes together for me. A little bit cleaner for Nerona. He's going to go outside. Whoa, double And he goes for the for triple Tata. on. Oh, oh, he frames the crap out of it. Clipped the hay bale. Did you see that double across from I did. Tata, and then he went over table? I don't know what line he's even taking. Yeah, I don't know where exit, you go but... from that, but that was spicy. A little spicy meatball from him. Mm -hmm. And now, just like that, Ev moved back, uh, not on him, but with some clear air to try to push for Tato. He has been in constant battle since the very start of this race, and he's held strong. Jake Spies is still leading this thing, by the way, and he has inched away at the front of the field as the fight for second continues. Dylan Dallaire has moved up into fourth with Hayden Stevenson in fifth. Nerona now sixth. Tucker Zimmerman is seventh. Maverick Snyder in eighth. And Alec Horn is in the final transfer spot. Cash Woods is still hanging on back here with Caden Speck behind that. So this is still up in the air for this final spot. And now Maverick Snyder just went down. Oh, and Cash Woods sneaks on <laughs> by. And who is that just picking it up from a crash? Zimmerman. Zimmerman. So Woods is going to try to go to the outside of that and make the pass. Not going to work just yet. And Snyder is going to jump over top of him and make the pass, as does Caden Speck. So Snyder goes to the final transfer spot. And look at how tight this is. Yeah, Cash Woods is moving all over the place. He's had a rough one so far. Snyder, though, getting a little sketchy. He's going to lose the spot to Vanderkoy because he's going to get back by there. Oh, wait, oh, that's not... That is cutting kind of through. Thing. That's uh, Alec Horn, I believe. Horn, sorry. Teammate of... Or Caden Speck, I'm sorry. Speck, sorry. Three different the, teammates. Oh, Cash Woods down Cash again. Cash Woods down in a blender again. Let's see if he gets... Or he's not. He's out of it. Zimmerman is the final transfer spot here in ninth place, and he is trying to... Fight, fight, fight right here. Caden Speck, though, outside looking in. We'll see what he can do. As uh, Zimmerman got sideways in the whoops, and here comes Caden Speck trying to close that gap down. He's going to go to the outside right here, and Zimmerman ripped that inside run beautifully. So white flag in the air, one lap to go for Zimmerman to hold on to this final transfer spot. Caden Speck wants it, and he is going to go for it. Anybody going to quad up? Nope. Over and three. 
And a good block right yeah, there to by the Zimmerman. Inside. That was great. Both of them jumped kind of leaning towards that inside, but not a block pass. Just you were ahead protecting and really a uh, smart move by both of them. Spec going to go over here. Oh, who's oh, down? Two riders down. That's Snyder and Shao. So Shao is going to, uh, no, no, Shao, Shao is past Zim. Let's get back to the leader real quick because Jake Spies is about to win this Too race. Too many teammates, bro. So Jake Spies, District Designs, puts it P1 and he won here are the 250s at Denver. Stevenson second, Vanderkoy third, Furtado fourth, Zimmerman now fifth, Delaire sixth, Snyder seventh, Horn is eighth. Oh, Whoa, and a block pass to Lauren Nerona going at Whoa. it with Cormac. Cormac lays it down, and now Cash Woods, I think, is in the final transfer spot. Through the whoops he goes. He's getting a little sideways, but I think he's going to hold it on. Nerona's going to try to close oh, it down. Oh, my carnage behind him, too. One last turn, and Cash Woods survives to go into the main event in Denver. Nerona right on him at the end, but it will be Woods who goes through. Aiden Speck with Tyler Shields right behind them. Ooh, Carson Bolin putting Cormac just on the Cormac, deck. Just getting Poor F Evan Cormac, man. Oh, gosh. That's like some Nicoletti stuff when you've been on the ground. Oh. Like, No, that's Freddie Norin just trying to make it through a heat race, just going down like three times on the last lap. <laughs> By the way, uh, shout out to Cormac, who I, I don't want to mess it up for sure, but I'm pretty sure I met him at Denver, or Denver, in Philadelphia this past weekend. And uh, he was what? doing some, What? <laughs> Philadelphia? Philadelphia. Uh, he was doing some filming, saw him on track walk, so shout out to him. Hopefully he makes it in out of the LCQ. Shout out oh, Nerona gets it on penalties. Cash no Woods. No way. Dirty little cheater. What is that? Two point, uh, we can't even see. 1.25. 1.25. Oh. I was just going to say, like, oh, wait. No, he is the, he's 84, right? Yeah, Damn, 84. so someone up front. So 2.68, I think. Okay. 2.88 or 2.68. Um, dude, I was going to say Cash Woods, like good for him. He just was up and down, up and down, never got to breathe that whole race. His heart rate was probably crazy. Thinks he makes it and then loses on train or on cuts. That's just such a bummer for cash money, millionaire Woods. That's my, uh, my long lost cousin actually. <laughs> cash money millionaire. Yeah. There's this guy, uh, I got sent a, a photo today, a screenshot I guess this guy that makes uh, hockey highlights. Look at this. Look at this screenshot. Okay. Colin's not Sorry, looking. What's up? It says every goal from the season. Praise A Wood. Uh, and it's like this guy that makes, I don't know if it's all hockey or just the <laughs> Red Wings. And it says the level of content from A Wood just never ceases to impress. Dude, you often for real. get the joke on Reddit that not all heroes wear capes, but this is probably as, you cl as close to, as you can get outside of saving a life. To that not being something that's cut off but praise a was, I was like it's just awesome i was like i'm gonna quote that guy and put that that first sentence level of content you get that's gonna be in my instagram bio forever oh yeah someone said it oh yeah cash woods though crushing it and we got some great content from him but sadly not a transfer but now he's in our favorite race the lcq can provide us with more content Indeed, it can. It always provides the goods when we get to those last chance mm. qualifiers. Mm. Can't wait to uh, to get there. Teej is gonna need a, his royalties soon. Yeah, we we're keep, gonna send royalties to Teej if we been, keep uh, abusing it. The more people that subscribe to the channel, the more money we can pay Teej for, and the more oh yeah, so oh, we can get. Oh yeah. All right back in the server ready to get draw uh, get get the gate dropped i should say for 250 heat number two here at empower field at mile high which is one of my least favorite stadium names because why would you say where it is at that point just say empower field um i mean still mile high so it has a name now and it didn't used to have a name yeah because it used to be called mile high so Stadium. now it's just sponsored and now it's empower field at mile high i mean ooh, like, yeah is that what it looks like yeah it's got this cool little arch bowl shape i guess i don't really watch broncos games that much but bad bad my uh aunt used to be uh she was a broncos fan that's the only broncos fan i've ever known uh, I honestly think it's kind of like the old habits die hard, just like <clears throat> crypto.com arena or whatever is still like, oh, Staples Center. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, I guess. you know, there's certain things like. But it's literally called Empower Field at Mile High. Qualcomm to whatever. Yeah. It's like that's Qualcomm until it got torn down. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, Empower folks. Field. Here we go. 250 Heat number two in Denver is off and running. One dub of Seth Shirley wheelies down the start straight, trying to get to that corner first. He makes some contact. He's sliding into turn one, and Emmett Sund is going to grab the whole shot because of it. John Heilman, a good start in second, and then right on the outside of him was Timmy Briscoe in third. So Shirley in about sixth here on lap one as Emmett Sund leads on the Supercross triple with the rest of the field right behind him. Yeah, Emmett Sund off to just a great start there. And this one looking like it might be a little bit more spread out just right off the rip uh, with a, a person who thinks they can win the heat, getting a whole shot right away. Um, and then everyone else kind of spreading around. But we'll see hanging a wheel here. We'll see if Heilman can get up onto him and make something happen soon because Heilman wants to compete for the race win tonight and thinks that he can get up there. So see what happens. Where is Seth Shirley? wasn't about six. Let's I'm see trying to creep. if he's moved up at all. I think he, he moved is... down. Yeah, he went backwards. So so I'm just Seth looking Shirley across the down. top of the screen. There it is. 15th. Shirley 15th for the champ. Behind Schaefer was also up there in qualifying. Look see, at all this carnage. People don't like sometimes when I do this, but I always love watching this and seeing how Shirley navigates these opening <laughs> laps. He's right behind guys. He's trying to make some passes, but do it tastefully. Ooh, he's right in front of him and moves up to 11th. I mean, it's just the sand here. It's awesome watching someone who's so much faster and also scary watching them kind of the way they they piece their way through the Ooh, field. Look at that, that two for there and clean. No, it did not go down. Should have been a clean. That's crazy. Lost the spot back again. But just the way of how much faster he is. And then you see what these guys have to deal with every time you see a Braden Carter, Leclerc, Shirley get a bad start. This is the kind of stuff that they have to deal with lap after lap to make their way up. And it's just... Uh, Oh, it's Tyler kind of Nichols different. up for the quad in front of him. Yeah. Absolutely faced it. And surely, just like that, has moved seven spots in a single lap. He's up to eighth as we go back to our leader, Emmett Sun. Heilman still right on him, and Briscoe not letting go either. So just like we saw in the first heat race of 250 West action, not a lot of separation. It seems like everyone's running a similar pace, and it's maybe keeping guys a little bit closer together for battles. Yeah, I think maybe the 450 class has a couple like bigger lines, right? That are might be a little bit more testy. Um, All right. That might be able, like, might kind of separate them a little bit more. But it also could be just the way this racetrack is. We've pretty much seen it before. There's a lot of 90s. There's not too much separate except for this one rhythm section here. And we've seen a lot of different mistakes um, and ways to get through it. Look at that. Oh, like he goes that. three and a half. <laughs> and that was, was like three and seven eighths right there. That was, was just the not. It, it kind of looked, I was like, oh, he's going for the quad. And then the second he left the lip, I was like, oh, he's not going for the triple, but not going <laughs> for the quad. And uh, good suspension there. Knows how to keep it on two wheels. Kept the lead, S too. Still leading, yeah. And look at that move right up there for the red bike. Yeah, that's Briscoe outside Briss to end Timmy. for Timmy Briscoe. Down the inside, though, and Heilman <clears> defends. <throat> so this is now a fight for second place. And don't look now. Behind them comes Emmanuel Cepeda. Also trying to mix it up. So this is a, a good little fight as these guys. Ooh, Heilman, quad. Finally gets that line Kinda right there. Easily, too. Yeah. So it seems like it's all about just landing in that little pocket beforehand, maybe, and you can get it a little bit smoother. Yeah, he did have a big seat bounce there, but it's just, yeah, when you can land and kind of get your suspension compressed and get it to unload at the right time, just like real life, you know, it's it's uh, the way that you can kind of pop your bike just a little bit more. Look at that, quad up. Heilman's just a big line guy i guess right now but <laughs> he's he's ripping but not really making any uh any progress so and then these guys are kind of separating from third so howman's kind of all on his own just praying for a mistake yeah he's trying to close this gap down to emmett's son can keep seeing the one dub behind these guys he's a little bit of ways back he's entering the whoops now behind them but keep an eye out for seth surly to try to close this gap down late as we go up and over the finish line, jump once more mm -hmm. onto lap five. We have got four minutes complete, two minutes, and a lap left to go in 250, heat number two. Emmett Sund has led this thing the whole way on his Verb Moto Kawasaki. We'll see if he can close it out in the closing stages of this one. Heilman's trying to make a run for it. Cepeda's now up into third. He's been cooking, and he got around Timmy Briscoe, who might be short in the triple now. Got, got it clean, but Joey Rico also... Keeping the pressure on on his Sparko number 82 down the inside, trying to make a pass for fourth. Not going to get it just yet. And there is the front fender of Seth Shirley that just appeared at the back of this screen. There he is. 
Oh, and we got Riders down. That's Emmett's son. Leader. That is the leader. Son down. is down. Briscoe's down. Yep. And, and the Rico's down. And so. the Rico, yeah. All of them went down together. So new leader, John Heilman, has taken over the point. Cepeda right behind him. And then entering the whoops right now is Seth Shirley at the back of this group. A minute left on the clock plus a lap. And Heilman hold on here in Denver to win this heat race. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Sun went down, went all the way back to six. But then with uh, Rico and Briscoe going down right back to fourth, and that allows Shirley all the way up to third from where we saw him before. Heilman pushing and wants to get that quad again, wants to kind of run away from this thing and kind of put a little statement down. He's uh, in a championship battle for uh, second in points, and he's also kind of a guy that thinks he can break this win streak uh, by Seth Shirley against all the West Coast guys. So it would be cool to see him kind of con continue this and have a good couple laps. But if we see Shirley gaining up on him, uh, that's going to be a little bit a little bit scary for the guys in the rest of the field tonight at this uh, stadium. But right now, it doesn't look like Shirley's gaining any time from the third place position. Howman's kind of keeping that gap. Yeah, and you know these guys, like you said, desperately want to win this last true West round, get a win on the uh, docket for the season, and make sure Seth Shirley knows that uh, he won this year and that uh, he was pretty dominant. But the next generation is coming right behind him as he moves to the 450 class for outdoors. Battle for second is on as the white flag waves. Shirley has now caught Cepeda, and the one dub machine is trying to move up into second place on this final lap. Heilman is sneaking away. Oh, Shirley into the back as Cepeda goes down. He took a line I have not seen anybody take as he jumped over the roller exiting the sand and just had nowhere to go. Hits <coughs> the back of Cepeda. Emmett Sun comes up a little bit short right there. So it looks like this is going to be Heilman's heat race to lose. He's got a few corners left, but it's finally opened up in his favor. Yeah, Heilman, just a, a great ride here. Uh, got off to not the best start, but slowly, I guess a good start, but worked his way up, worked his way past people, and then uh, just able to stay smooth and steady this whole race. Cepeda, though, with a great ride also. I want to shout that out uh, as we're coming close to the checkered flag. Really cool by Cepeda to, to go through. Oh, shoot. And is that a... That was the last corner. Oh, no, that's a lapper. Yeah, it's okay. a lapper. Good job, Spader. Here it is, John Heilman, final turn, and he will take the win. It's Whoa! John Heilman, your winner. 250, Heat 2 in Denver. Manuel Cepeda crumbs across in second. Shirley third. Sun fourth. Rico fifth. Briscoe sixth. Cobble seventh. Schaefer eighth. And Grant Zappé. Not seen that name before. Looks like he's going to hold on for ninth. Lucas Brune trying to make a run at it. Zappé's got to get the whoops clean here. Going to hop a little bit. But should be okay. I don't know. This is going to be good. Brune's there. Brune's up the inside. Last trying to corner. Make it. Brune goes oh. for it. Lays him down. They're both down. Yeah. Who gets up first? It's a drag oh. race. And Zappé doesn't get it. It's Brune to the main event. And Zappé goes to the LCQ. I mean, clean. It's clean. Uh, it's the last corner for last the final corner, transfer he spot. He didn't punt him. That was just a good like slide in. Yeah, it kind of made contact. little swing arm to front axle action. That was that was cool. I like that. Bummer for Zappé. Hopefully somehow there's some crazy cuts or something if you're <laughs> him. But, man, that, that was awesome. Nice little slicing and dicing there at the end. Cutting down, going long in the whoops. Cutting down and going up the inside. Locking the rear brake up and just kind of making it happen. Both going down. Fighting over who's going to get JLB less. And... Man, make it happen, and cuts her in, and he is still out. Yep. Poor so Zippy. Zippy. Brun does make it as does Schaefer, Cobble, Briscoe, Rico, Panda, Sun, Panda. Shirley, Cepeda, and Heilman officially locks in the dub here in 250, heat number one. All right, let's get back in the studio <laughs> I was for a little bit. ask you if you have a, a, a Padres hat, because uh, I do. I just. I think I might just. Here. I think I might just be. You might have to. Yeah, rest in peace, uh, Mike Trout's knee. And this they, week. I think I'm just done for the season. Like, I'm going to go to the games. Yeah. I'm going to go to some Padres games too, San Diego. I got a couple people that want to go down there and just, I just can't, right? There's hopes. Dude, I can show you, but I made two Cy Young bets gone within like the first two weeks. Mm. It was like Bieber and Strider. Yeah, sad. And most strikeouts, someone else. And I made a little, I made a little angels, little sprinkle, little Mike Trout MVP sprinkle. Got a Mookie Betts one. That's still going good. But I'm like, everyone's hurt. There's no reason to be an Angel fan except for the watch. Like, Daniel? Watch. No, he's not even. Oh, Hoppy, dude. Oh, <laughs> oh Hoppy popping off. Adele sucks. Like, it's. <sighs> Sad. 
Sad. There's like one. Oh, and Zach Neto. Zach Neto and a Hoppy. It's like two young studs. Moniac, I guess, because he's still young, but it's like they're not even playing him. I'm just sad. I was so I was gonna wear. I forgot to ask before the stream. I was gonna be like, give me a Padres hat. All right. Okay. We'll convert you. We'll do it next It'll week. Next week, we'll week I'll wear a Padres hat. Bat on your yeah. shoulders. I do have a hat though from a 2002 World Series corduroy hat. That's sick. I just need to clean it, and I was gonna <laughs> bring that, but. Listen, sad. listen, Finns fan. At least the Marlins have two world championships, okay? I got nothing. Yeah, and I got one. I'm a Padres fan. I got nothing. You got nothing, nothing. to hang my hat on. Just Tony like Gwynn's Hall of Fame. Tony Gwynn. That's all we got. Yeah. Tony Gwynn, Mister 394. Yeah. So. Ha Song Kim. I liked. I like the Padres though. Padres are cool. Not in your lifetime, Fins fans, so you're less than 21 because they won in 03. So if mm -hmm. you were if you were born before 03, the Marlins were world champs. Ain't been good since 03, just like the Angels. Mm -hmm. I learned something. Guess who the all-time hits leader for the Angels is? Rod Carew? No. Oh. He was too many uh, hits, like, for the Angels, I guess. Uh, for the Angels? Troy Glaus? Uh -uh. Tim Salmon? Uh -uh. Am I in the right era? Yeah. Garrett Anderson? Yeah. Okay. And then I learned that who's the Padres? All time hits leader? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about, bro? Tony Gwynn. I don't think so. Yes, it is, I don't you think dork. So. Hold on. He has 3,000 hits with the Padres. I thought someone else had more because that's no, where. Hold on. So stupid. Come on. Hold on. <laughs> I watched a trivia video last night. I thought it was someone like I was shocked. The all time home runs leader is Nate Colbert. Manny Machado's almost there. Gosh. Maybe it was another team. Don't there was one that's like, oh, you know this guy? And it's like, no, it's not him. Maybe it was like Cal Ripken or someone. I think it might have been him. Like someone that you think is like a lock, right? And it's just not. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I don't think any other Padres player has like a thousand hits on the Padres, dude. It, Gwyn was, he stuck with us the whole way through. And yeah. Do you like my Angels knowledge, though? Pulled out Tim You're Sam and Troy Glass. You want me to hit up Troy Percival, too? I can name <laughs> I can name their whole starting nine I think from the oh, two from World, the World Series. Series team. Yeah, Eckstein, Eckstein second, Troy Gloss third, Tim Salmon was Tim left fielder, center I think. Center Anderson and Vla or Anderson and yeah. Vladdy were corners. Um, All right, we're off and running for 450 Heat One as Awood tries to figure that out. Baseball into is turn back. number one. No surprise to see the 78 of Jacob Hubbard rip the whole shot. Sorry. He's out front early on. Tharp with a good start this time as well. Sully also up there. He was quick in qualifying, but he's going to get passed by teammate Johnny Padani, and Sully's going to case the triple. Got to knock it landed on. Holy crossover line to hold position. Pretty much missed a couple timing gates there, but we'll allow it, and he's down anyway. So got him in the end. So now Tharp <clears throat> trying to go for the lead on Hubbard. Triples to that, the inside. Oh. Cased it. That was cool. We almost saw a triple to the inside with a double kind of to the left inside, but case it. That would have been a nice little over under move on mm. Hubbo. Hubbo holds on to it as Tharp's doing the wild out wheelie boys across the start straight. These two both go with a nice little gap in front of Carter. This is a stacked little heat race. We it got is. Going it's, on. it's deep, deep, deep. We got Chrome Dog in 16th. That's how deep it is right now as Hubbard leads at the end of lap number one. I mean, nice little whip over the finish for both of them. Tharp is still hot on his heels. Is it only a matter of time, though, before the one sneaks Whoa. into the picture? Look at this line. Jump across. across. Quad. Oh, Hubbard's short and Tharp to the outside. Not going to get it. That we got a battle for the lead going on. Oh, Hubbard's sick. getting wily. That Dooley's. line. Dooley's. A little bit of humping. So, Braden <laughs> Tharp had a line. We're going to have to keep an eye out if anyone saw that. And you, tire if tap? you didn't, you missed it. We're going to talk about it. Yeah, not even like a tire tap, but like an on-purpose case. Look at this. Both tripling to the inside. But Hubbard that's defensive. a super sick Tharp wave. Drive across the start straight inside line. Is he going to cut spot. down? Hubbard squares it off. Jumps over him, I think. No, not quite. Yes. And Tharp does take over the race lead. So can Hubbard get it back now? So we're going to the whoops. Yeah, the hoopty doos. Look at these 450 riders. They're just so much better in the whoops. Just not because the bikes allow it and the technique that they use, but just the skill and the weight of the bikes for these guys. It's so awesome watching the top level two or 450 guys go through. I like these differing lines here. So he's going outside, can't jump across. That's going to ruin this line right here. He's going to lose the spot to Hubbard. Hubbard back into the lead. He's going to take it, but watch this line by Tharp. Tharp's going to go on off, and he's going to taste that on purpose so he doesn't have to jump into the face. 
I'm assuming Hubbard's doing that just a little bit, but man, that's going to be way faster than those guys launching and trying to scrub into the face of the triple, unsettling your suspension before you go off that. Yeah, it's kind of like a, almost like a back of a dragon's back kind of, because you're mm -hmm. just using it like downhill whoops, but uh, yeah, certainly a good time saver if you can utilize it to your advantage. Johnny Padani is third, Caleb Hall's moved to fourth, and Blakely is now inside the top five. Bodie Parker in sixth in a fight with T. Lang across the start line. Lang is going to get it. Parker squares it off, but Lang does get the spot. So Parker slips to seventh. And Carter, who was third, is now eighth. He's got Spencer Turley right behind him and mm. then Blake O'Brien for the final transfer spot. So this, cool. is, uh, this is a little tidy in here. Carter's got to be careful because... One little mistake, and he's out of a transfer spot. Yeah, this reminds me of the how it was at the beginning of the first 250 heat. Uh, just these guys nose to tail the whole way through, Braden Carter. And these guys, there's not too many different line options. There's kind of seems to be that faster one outside the middle through the sand. Carter with a big mistake there. Turley coming up behind him, not going to be able to make it happen. But Carter, you see kind of casing up on purpose there. Uh, Turley tossing it behind him. Turley's back baby Turley <laughs> is back actually might be here for the first time ever but Turley is on it and I love the comeback of Spencer Turley look at this Braden Carter quadding up someone else quadding up from off track triple to the inside yikes pogo stick lands it T-Lang did a little pirouette Sideways. front flip oh. looks like our Willie official over there B-Lars up the inside B-Lars trying to make the the spot for here, the, the transfer yeah, final transfer spot here and that was close they came across each other mm. on the start straight that was really Cross interesting streams you and can Lars say is right there let's see if he can get a drive down the start straight now nah, laying good clean drive through that corner Lars has to go back to the drawing board here a little bit yeah there's a couple guys I would think people would be taking a little bit of an outside in approach on that final inside route before the finish they kind of seem to be coming and knifing it which is weird just to kind of keep an eye on. Oh, who's down? Oh, look at that. That's Padani? Blake O'Brien, D. No, Davis. Uh, That's Padani. Padani down. Prod 0-1 on the deck. And McPherson now closes up right behind him. Doolies. As they go across the triple <laughs> together, McPherson cases the Jesus out of it. Who's the guy that likes that, Carnell? Yeah, Carnell loves it. But he loves yeah. when we go heavy. Oh, Parker down. We'll that get, can allow we'll D. D. Davis into a transfer spot, I think. Yes, it is. D. Davis up into ninth on his DX3 Kawasaki. I think... I think we get the best duallys in outdoors when there's like two dudes coming up to like the freaking the sky shot, the sky the shot, yeah, and you just know it's coming. We can prepare because some of these kind of come out of nowhere, and yeah. you don't know if people are going to toss it. You have to toss it on that jump. Yep, yep, yep. Whoa, Bilars with the interesting line tire tap in the inside tough block, but holds on to eight. D Davis is like. Hey, man, can we clean it up a little yeah. bit here? We got guys coming up from behind yeah. here. I'm scared, dude. There's three guys back here that want to murder me, and uh, let's keep it together. Yeah. B-Lars might be making a couple more little small mistakes. Look how easy that quad is for the 450 riders here. Devin Davis showing him a wheel, just stay, staying low in the corner, a little Cooper Webb action there. Uh, D. Davis is going to be looking for an opening. Any small mistake that you see B-Lars make, I would not be surprised to see Devin Davis capitalize on it. These guys, different lines. So oh, double. comes together. Whoa! They go down. Bilar is off the bike, and Dave is going to pick it up in 11th, I think. So going through into 8th then, or 9th, I should say, is Pad no, 8th, Padani, <laughs> Parker 9th, and then O'Brien made it through into 10th. We'll get back to this battle in a second because the battle for the lead is on, or it was on. Hubbard had just gotten back around Tharp, and now Tharp is settling in back behind him. Two seconds the gap, and here comes Braden Carter, 59-1. To a 104.6 and a 59 flat. So Hubbard just ran his best lap of the race. Carter can go into the 58s if he wants to, though, and I think he may just be about to do it. Yeah, and he had that 58 before. Look at that. Oh, my God. What a pro line there. We saw it on board for the first time. White and flag it's just too. unreal. White flag lap. Can he get second? That's a just better oh, game pick. Look at that. Hubbard's down. Tharp is on the way to win a 450 heat race, but Carter is right on his rear wheels. Quad up. Triple, triple to, to the, the inside, inside by defensive. Tharp. Carter's not going to be able to get it done just yet. Two, three more corners to go and a whoop section. I guess four, now three. Let's see what happens. Carter is railing these corners. Tharp wants to hold off this spot as long as he can. He gets on top of the whoops good. Oh Carter goes for God. it down the inside. Pushes him way out on the start straight Sent and it. makes the pass. Tharp is going to go into this final turn and try to rip it. Braden Carter takes 450 heat one in Denver as Tharp crosses the line second. Hall third yeah. with Hubbard fourth. Turley 5th, Lang, Blakely, and Padani 6, 7, 8, and Chromie 
sneaks into the final transfer spot late in this one. Welcome. He will be going to the main event. Welcome to the Chrome Zone, it's baby. The Chrome Zone. Dean Davis, first to the LCQ, just short. Dude, Braden Tharp, I like that. An insane run up the inside of the whoops. He didn't even roll over. He just just held it, and Braden Carter just sniped it with authority. And he at least knew not to keep going, hurt him, uh, so they didn't go down. And I like Braden Tharp's little wheelie down the start straight. To me, in my mind, that was like a little tip of the cap. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, dude, you're you're freaking, you're a badass. Like, you got me. You know, just I'm not even gonna try to rail this corner and get close to you. Like, we're good. You're yeah, we're we're good. You're you're. You might be the goat. Yep. The uh, is he the king? Yeah, he'll yet. be he the king. Because the goat, yet. you got to the goat though. Has not is different. The Tyson goat Fresca is you know well. back and forth. Tyson might be the goat. I'm talking the king of SX. Uh, the king. The king. He's the king of the underground. Yeah. Shout out, uh, Jameson. What's up? First chat with the boys. Uh, oh, Jameson? Jameson 931 thanks for coming watching it Jurassic Thunder the goat throw it's the throat goat All right and we know who that is keep talking Awood I, I know I know I'm, I'm reading too I was just waiting for some replies solvent power sports what is up all you guys so first 450 heat was a doozy second one I'm trying to think who we're going to have in here so we're going to have Jeremy Smith, our teammate. We're going to have Alexis LeClaire. We're going to have Colby Eaglin. We're going to have Luke Sullivan. We're going to have Braden Castellaneta. We're going to have... Look, just dropping knowledge, dude. Oh, I guess I could read the starting lineup that's over on the <laughs> other screen. Austin Pardlo, Garrett Hollenbach, Daniel Mills. Come on. Uh, he knows he needs to get it together. I yell at him every single uh, week as I pull out of your neighborhood. I send him a lot of texts and then reply when I get home. Tanner Rogers, Squib Squiddy, Jeremy Schiabro, Balzer, Bendis, Frank Jackson, uh, Eric Rockefeller, Eaglin. The boys. All the boys are here. Horvath, the goat. Horvath is here? No, he's just in chat. We're just getting shout outs. Horvath's oh, the goat. Horvath, Throat yeah. goat is the guy in the Yeehaw Brewing hat, says Bur Burrito MX. <sighs> Everyone's I mean, just trying to bring it up at this point. $20 man. is $20. Whoop speed is crazy. Why, why is Horvath? There's a pace and shout out. Braden Carter is a goon. We're getting all these Horvath shout outs because is last week Harlan on Twitter said, I have uh, the true goat of MX Simulator. And I said, Rush Chapman nor Tyler Horvath are oh, the goats. Yeah, I remember. So that everyone's just trying to go against me at this point. But uh, you guys are wrong. Doorknob is the goat of like, what, 03? He used to just live in there. You set up Door a pillow of bed. You don't mm. remember Doorknob? No. Dude, Awood, where have you been, bro? I, don't know. I used to live he used in to be too. In in 03 nonstop, like maybe 27 hours a day, as facebook.com forward slash the real doorknob. Mm. And it was Tyler Horvath. Is so. he the guy that would always was James Stewart also? I don't think so. All right. Uh D Mills number is a gooner. Yes. Uh BPC OG. Braden Carter just wins the heat race, comes in, drops a subscription for his 46th month. Thank you. Uh, channel point pulls. We're off and running 450 heat we too, by the way. I need to change the graphic. Is. We'll get there when it's time. Oh, big push Everyone out from the down. inside. Rasmus Balzer, your fastest qualifier, comes out with the early lead. And another 250 guy. Oh, someone got yeeted and Leclerc went down too. So Frank Jackson moves up into second place. Right from the get-go, Seth Carr is third, oh, Holm fourth, and D-Mills rounding out our top five. A lot of guys went down in those first two. Oh, oh later he hits he's the on the pole. Stick. He's on the pole, folks. Oh, let's go see it. Is he still there? Somebody come get him. Either she's dancing like a stripper. I think he's done. Somebody come get him. Did he disconnect? Him. He's balls in like a stripper. Yeah, he. Wait, his game crashed. It must have. Oh, no way. 
we he, haven't seen it, that since it, like 2014. It Hell didn't yeah! Even disconnect him. It just he's now reconnected again. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Rasmus. I was st stoked about three 250 dudes <laughs> in the top five of this heat race, but I mean that's, that's pretty cool. Crazy. For anyone that doesn't know, we used to run people into the stadiums when you would be waiting for UID grabs and slowly punt them into a structure or a wall. If you hit them into the collision, their game would crash so that you can get a higher qualifying. Sad. Apparently, it's the red tough blocks that he landed on after the pole. It wasn't the pole that uh, took him down, which is the same well, the issue. Pole, the pole, basically, the pole will lead you to bad things. But that's so the stay same, away from the pole. That's the same issue that uh, Caleb Hall and Turley had a couple weeks ago, or maybe last week. Forget who exactly, but uh, somebody disconnected immediately in the main event last week or at nashville when they landed on those red tough blocks together so tough Sad. break early on for bowser he's lcq bound right from the get-go it is considered a mechanical dnf at this at this point in time so uh, adam holm now dealing with pressure from anthony pachone noah bindis up here and leclerc from that second turn crash is all the way into fifth already yeah i why is it matter if it's a mechanical dnf he's just being i'm playing. saying like it's basically treated as a mechanical dnf yeah like, yeah yeah like he didn't oh, mess right up down. himself uh leclerc goes for a bobby big line right there tried to triple to that very inside rut probably i wonder if he could like landed in that and yeeted himself across leclerc gets up still goes for the quad that shows you how broken 450s are <laughs> uh austin eaglin gets passed up the inside by alexis leclerc they're gonna come over this triple right here See my boy D Mills move back up to fifth after he was in third after a great start, drop back to seventh. Now he's moving on up after a couple of mistakes. And then Leclerc is chasing Braden Castaneda, who's two seconds out front in this rhythm section. Look at these 450 guys, but look how close he is actually to Braden. Ooh. Castaneda, that's a cut right there. Now Leclerc, you're gonna get penalized. Cheater. <laughs> um, he's moving up on Castaneda and D Mills. And then other than that, I don't think there's too much action at the front. Eight second gap. Maybe a battle for second and third between Picchioni and Holm. Holm actually just got by him. So that's going to move him into the second place position behind Frank Jackson, leading by eight seconds. If you had that on your bingo card, you're a liar. No, nah, Frank Jackson's good. Come on. Oh, Holm no, misses no, up. No, no, but like leading by eight <laughs> seconds over, I just dropped all the stack oh, names. Pichon oh, down. Holm cut back Pichon. up underneath. Pichon to defend, and he is down on the ground. Let's see how many spots he loses. He's going to get up behind Eagland, and that's it, behind Eagland. So he is now eighth after battling for second. As Rockefeller in the final transfer spot now hot on his heels. And mm. We'll get back to that in just a minute. Go up and check out our race leader, Frank Jackson. We've barely talked about him this race as we're halfway, almost uh, three quarters of the way done with this race, I should say. Jackson on the Underground RC, Kawasaki leading this thing with a 9.1 second gap and benefited from Balzer going down, but has taken it and ran with it. He's gone at the front. I mean, yeah, there's no, especially with how close this 450 class starts at the beginning of the race, having a nine, a nine second lead uh, at the start, uh, four minutes into a heat race is insane in this stack 450 field. But Frank Jackson, man, he's just one of those guys who's just kind of always there, puts in some good finishes uh, as well in outdoors. I mean, look at that national number 28. You don't get that by being a slouch. That's just honestly, oh, clips the tough block there. He's going to recover here, triple. He'll figure out a quad somewhere in here, I'm sure of it. Uh, now it goes triple single, but national number 28 is just an amazing, amazing number right there. But I feel like he's just a person you don't talk about because he's always hanging around in that like seventh to 10th place. And, but you know, through all of Supercross and all of outdoors, that's going to give you a great national number. And here he is, uh, showing off what he's got a great start and good to see him before the year, you know, come along and get a heat race win. Yeah. He is cruising now at the front and, uh, still has a couple laps left to go. Back to second place. Adam Holm is holding it. Leclerc is trying to shove Noah Bindis aside, and he will do so to get into the three spot. So Leclerc has now charged all the way back up to third. Next up for him is teammate Adam Holm. They're even almost matching gears this week. Uh, someone in chat said that gear that Leclerc is wearing has got to be crusty at this point. He's been wearing it all season, and he's barrel rolling to the deck. Leclerc is down. Bindis goes by. Eaglin goes by. Castellaneta goes by. And Leclerc will pick it up just as Picon gets there. And he'll settle in now behind Pachon on the 57 machine as they continue their fight in what is now a battle for sixth. 
Jeremy Smith is up into eighth, and Bryce Whelan was ninth, but we've got some Whoa! chaos galore going on here. I think it's actually Rockefeller, yes, <clears throat> who is in the final transfer spot, but look at this dogfight. 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, basically all on your screen right there. It's Heckman just... Oh, and Rockefeller Heckman, went down, so yeah. now it's a transfer spot. Heckman He's got Rogers right behind him. I think Rogers that, there trying to make a move. Look at this quad. He's got a little bit more speed. Does he go to the outside? No, he kind of goes, oh, yeah, he does in between. D-Mills right behind him, still pushing, but not too, super close. So Heckman needs to try to pressure, or is Heckman's trying not to get pressured by Rogers into a mistake. The leader just went on the last lap, so now we got a whoop section and a straightaway plus one lap to go. Look at these four all chasing the final transfer. All four of these guys are still in it. If you think they're not, you're wrong. Yeah, this uh, is going to be good. White is flag is out. Sketch. These guys are just on the nerves and the, the pressure is so high. You got sweaty palms starting to get hot. Everyone here. Oh, oh Heckman, Heckman goes down. down. Oh, you hate to see it. Now it's just a teammate battle here. You got Rogers, D Mills, and Whelan nose to tail here. And what's going to happen? Rogers has been really good this year, but he's oh. been fading late in the season. D Mills is trying to pick it up, and Whelan might be the fastest of all of them. He's going to triple down the inside to pass D Mills and get into 10th. Can he go after Rogers? D Mills triples it. on and gets it. Does he get the quad? He's he does. It. Triples to the inside as Frank Jackson picks up the win. D Mills is going for Tanner Rogers. He wants this final transfer spot, and it is on for the teammates. Yeah, it's going to need to be a, a send right here in the whoops or at least a consistent thing and have a better line. He's sending it coming in here. Let's see the speed. The speed looks pretty similar. All about who can get this corner cleaner. D Mills oh. gets hung up a little bit there. Is he going to send it up the inside of his teammate? No, no he's not. He's going to try to keep it close, keep it clean. I like that respect right there. You're not going to take him out, put him on the ground, yeah. and you're just going to pray that .555 seconds is going to be enough of cuts that Rodgers may have to get you in. So unofficially right now we're waiting for uh, timing and scoring to finish up here. <laughs> Actually, let's wait. And it is confirmed. Rodgers does make it. Uh, he goes with Jeremy Smith, Pichon, LeClaire, Bindis, Castellaneta, Eaglin, Holm, and Jackson. For the main event is Jackson does a little cheeky tire tap to underflip. And Case Fakey lands it. We're good. Frank Jackson, though, big dub here. 450 heat number two. Didn't really talk about it as he crossed the line, but well done, son, for the 28 Underground RC Cowie. Yeah, great ride by him. Putting that Underground RC machine on the top step of the podium, dominating the likes of Adam Holm, Colby Eaglin, and the rest of the field, showing him that he came to play today. He came to race. He came to race. Oh, God. oh yeah. Um, so Final. before that race started, I had you talk a little bit. I was doing some research because I thought I was right, and I'm pretty sure I'm on it at this point. Braden Carter, we were talking about it very briefly, uh, about the MX Sim Supercross King, whether or not he is going to be that or not, because he is one of two four-time champions in the game, the other being Tyson Fresquez. Braden Carter is on 28 career 450 supercross wins and tyson fresquez is on 29 Nine. so carter could tie him tonight and beat him as the all time next week all time by the end of the year supercross wins list holder yeah that would be huge that would be p2 for a tom home the highlight of his career he's had many more highlights i would pick his 2019 mxgp world championship as a bigger highlight than that second in the heat race but well done a tom didn't really cover you as much as we should have, but uh, we were watching those transfer spot battles. Yeah, he was bu -bu 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 barking, barking, barking. Thick boy <laughs> BT, aka <laughs> Baraden Tharp in chat says Carter not winning today. Uh, he's killing him because of what he did to him in the heat. So there you go, Raiden. What? No. Come on. Just because he embarrassed you in the second to last corner. Damn. I mean. I thought it was a respect thing. No, I know he's joking. <laughs> uh, respect thing. Balzer came in chat and said, too bad Ross isn't here. He would have swept 250. Oh, uh, yeah. Whatever, guys. You can just Oh, my God. Is that the start gate for the 250 LCQ, or is that the start gate for KTM Junior SX? Because look at all of those Katooms. You see them all? <laughs> I did, yeah. Look at them. Just every single person is on the 2018 250 SXF in this every race. Single every single person. person. So there you go. It's just a orange brigade kind of night. Oh, what are we gonna there. get? Oh, we gonna oh, get? oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna come. Oh. <laughs> Clip it. Clip it. 
I gotta get back in the server. We're having too much fun in here. I'm gonna Oops. chum. That's what they say. We are having way too much fun tonight, and I love it. We get late in the season, we get looser. I, think, I mean, right? yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, we've got no championships getting wrapped up, and I've been sober the last three or four streams, but we've been silly, silly to where people are like, "Dude, they would." Drinking. Hey, dial like, it back, I'm like, man. You've had way too like, many no. CL smooths over there. Too many hydro flask refills today. Uh, I've only drank oh, it. once oh. on uh, since I got back from uh, Nashville, and that was on Man Meat Monday. Had a couple of drinks with the boys playing Fall Guys, kind of dub. First, first try. You know, I had to put oh. my boy Nate to sleep and uh, <laughs> put my boy. We, we caught a dub. Oh, there we go. If you're well, a desk chair, body is a definitely temple. sleep on you every single night. <laughs> no question about that. They will definitely sleep on you if you're a desk chair. Is that chair. me laughing? That is you laughing. Listen. If you. you're a desk chair, he'll definitely sleep on you every <laughs> single night. No question about that. <laughs> we got you. That you're was from the stream on the Discord, yeah, right? Yeah, you were laughing okay. hard, yeah. I was giggling. I think that was another time. I think I was sober. He just got me. Got me good. Best race of the night, baby. Let's go. Four go to the main event. Everybody else goes home early. Who is going to make it out of the LCQ in Denver? We're off and running. Out of the middle, looks like a Katoom. Maybe a uh, Yamaha. I, I don't know who's going to get there first. It's going to be Tyler Shields getting the whole shot. Aiden Speck right behind him in second. Cole Strawn third. And Jackson Lindsay in fourth. Cole Strawn, I believe this is Cole on MX bikes, if I'm not mistaken. It is, yes it so, is. Yes, there you go, Cole Strawn making his uh, switch over to Sim a little bit and battling for an LCQ transfer spot. Oh, quad quad up. up! Down the inside goes uh, Caden Speck for the lead and he's got it. So it's Speck over Shields, over Strawn, over Hernandez with, what the heck is that name? Fatosa looking Mark on Condes the outside Fetosa. looking in, but he is pretty far back. Someone just got <laughs> A murder. Someone clipped that. There was a murder committed in yep. the. Yep, yep. In the background. Oh, we got runner down at fourth. It's Hernandez. Oh, Hernandez. That's so Fetosa going by. Yes. Fetosa. And we got Zepe who uh, got ruined in the last corner ruined. in the heat race. He is now in fifth, trying to close that gap down. Michael Mudge also had a good start in this one. He's up here mixing it up, trying to make a move up on Brazil's finest, Marcondes Fetosa of the SM Design. Honda team, I think that is. Looks like a Honda. Dude, they all look the same. Get up close and personal. Looks like a Honda. They all yeah, they all look the Honda same to me. Right if it's black or red, it's a Honda. Oh yeah, show me this bike, baby. Oh yeah. Look at that. Hondas are just the best. No doubt about it. No doubt. Kellen's a a, a brand whore for his gear, but not for his bikes. <laughs> Honda all day. Back to the lead, Caden Speck. Grant is so MX Bikes, and Zepe is Panda. Who's Grant? Uh, Grant. Grant, Grant Zepe. Oh, no, that is, is Zepe. W Panda. Oh, that's Panda. Okay. Grant is Panda. Ev Moof is Vanderkoy. Strawn is taking over. The Bikes guys are taking over because they realize after oh. years and years of talking smack, there's one elite racing series in the motocross simulation Stop world. Stop it. And there's and it's not because the game is better. It's because there's one elite streamer oh in the God. world we and that is start this. your system. We don't need this. We like Navo the Factory Goon and Cupcake. We it. like them a lot. We do. Here at Start Your System. I'm just saying that you're the best. You're my you're one of my best friends. And you're the best. Okay. Chill out. We like them. Just like my mom's better than friends. your mom, even though she's downstairs and I love her. I like Novo a lot. You got to chill down. I do. Okay. That's don't. I'm not talking crap. I'm just trying to support my friend Kellen. Okay. Thanks, Edward. I All appreciate right. it. Caden Spec, W Spec right now. Shield Strawn, Petosa. Not much happening. We got to yeah, get some action really. in here. Fetosa's, Let's go look at the three four battle. Petosa's cruising. Oh, here we go. Strawn has got Petosa right behind him. And Petosa is trying to get off the bubble. Yeah, it is go time here for the Brazilian. You think he's feeling, and listen, I'm as sad about this as anybody, but do you think Beitos is feeling a little bit extra? I got to make the main event on the anniversary Why? of Senna's death. Is that today? Yeah. 
Oh, well then, yeah. I, oh, yeah, for sure. very sad. Hello, beautiful. Is this a lapper and, and getting in the way and here? And there's my girl, Roxy. Uh, I don't know. Roxy, come here, puppy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. What do you got, Holly? Oh, sorry. 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 I didn't mean it. My bad. All right, Betosa, we might not get Holly today, guys. Uh, a little mishap there. Fetosa still chasing, holding on to the... No, everything changed. Everything changed. Michael Mudge is in fourth. Uh, Did it change? Betosa is down to sixth. I, I was know. just making sure timing there. and scoring wasn't broken. So Shields, Strawn, Spec, and Mudge. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Okay, so Mudge did get in the final transfer spot. Fetosa went down. And, uh, yeah, Sad. it's tough. I was trying to get her to uh, get closer to the I microphone, know. and I just slightly moved the chair, and it hit her toes. So I apologize. I didn't mean to do it. No, you I feel bad. Fine. I keep clicking this. It's your daughter. I'm so sad. We, maybe we'll get Holly back in here for the weekly check-in uh, once she feels better. All right. Get back into this. So Fatos is in six. Let's yeah, go. So let's show go. is there. Show we're is looking chasing. at Mudge here. He's Mudge checked, in the fourth though. spot. Well, I mean, he is, guys. but we're doubling the rhythm here. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Right we got to write it down, Caden Speck. Now, Speck is on the hot seat, but no, Ryder's going down. If you look back behind him, P5 is dead. Oh, everyone's yeah. dead. It's a show Snickles. that's moved into the final transfer spot. Betosa. And yeah. remember, Tyler's show has been knocking on the door for some podiums this year, so this is going to be a big miss if he doesn't go to the main event. White flag is in the air for race leader Tyler Shields. Cole Strawn is hanging tight with them, so it's really about whether Speck and Mudge can hold on. Looks like Fatos has dropped a ways off this group. These guys are good to go if they stay on two wheels this last lap, I think. Yeah, and I think it's it's one of those things you don't push anything. You go for all the easy lines. You're not going to be... I would be surprised to see Speck uh, here in the final chance or like quadding up or something like that in the long rhythm, unless it's a really, really comfortable one. They're not going to be tripling in, so... These guys will kind of just be chilling the rest of the way. Cole Strawn and Shields still way out front. So we'll see what if anything happens to these two in the long rhythm. And then I'm sure we'll go check in and watch them finish as they all get through cleanly. Yeah, they're good there. So it's whether or not they go down in the whoops at this point. Tyler Shields, it's like he's going to be A-OK -okay out front whether he goes down here or not. He's got time, and he is good to go through the whoops. Cole Strawn also clean through them. Michael Mudge getting a little bit of hop um, through there. And Speck got sideways as well, but I think they're going to be good. Shields is win winning this one. Strawn second, Mudge third, and Speck will get fourth. And they will hold off Tyler Show, who crosses the line in fifth. 2.7 seconds down. Not a lot of fireworks to end that one. But Nichols will take the win. Or take the win. He'll finish up in sixth. Perkins, Betosa, Anderson, Hernandez, Barboza, Fisher, Zepe, Cormac, Novak, Weigman, Niles, Woods, Lindsey, Carter, Buquette, and Bullen all missing out. R.I.P. But in the end, it is going to be Tyler the Shields end? taking the win. Did it even matter? In the end? Yeah. I got this. All right, A-Wood story time. Um... Kellen's uh, leaving for a minute. Uh, if you guys have any questions, hit me up. Uh, good race. Congrats to Shields and Strawn and Mudge and Speck for making that transfer. Bummer to all the guys that uh, were on the bubble and started falling away. What I would like to do right now is say that um, 450 class has got to be better than that. Uh, you guys need to bring some action. Some last lap corner passes. I want to see people getting hunted um in the last corner and that's exactly what i need uh instagram link doesn't work on his story we can fix that but guess what the good part is me and kellen look super handsome and we threw up the horns for you boys um i think it doesn't work from my story let me see if it works from kellen's story doesn't work from mine because of the way i reposted it um okay we got Holly's coming in round two. I know. Hey. No, he didn't break I'm your toe. I'm sorry. Tumble. You're okay. <laughs> Talk to the microphone here. I'll, I'll make sure I don't move. Come tell microphone all the fans. What do you got? Bad guy face officer. Bad guy and police officer? Yeah. Are you playing that? Are you playing like cops and robbers? Or... 
this? Oh, thanks for letting us know. So you just Anything want to else? let us know that there no? are... All right. Nope. nope. Do you want All to right. say hi in my mic? Peace up, so and small world. And small world, <laughs> flowers. Good night. Good night. Good night. We love you. Love you, Holly. Love you. All right, there's okay. your wholesome bit of the night here on the stream. All right, glad we got that. Yeah, we got that too. sorted. Wanted to make sure she got out what she wanted to say on the microphone. So, so yeah. I I think my link doesn't work because of the way I reposted it and it did like the full screen one. Maybe if you click on my link or on my story, maybe it'll go to Kellen's. Because I didn't just do the old, the old school way to post. It you know what? It's okay. It's okay because. We're here. You're here now. And uh, the boys. Levi Kitchen is going to cook. Uh, Mudge for the hand guards. Cole Strong is going to win. And that's all we got. No one asked me any questions when you were gone. Sad. 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 They, didn't, they didn't step up to the plate. Sad. 121. Oh, do you know the results of uh, Glenn Helen today? Was that they today? didn't do it at Glen Helen. They did it at Barstow. And I, no, I don't really. Because there's they're still debating <laughs> some technicalities right now. <laughs> so so that tells me Mathis lost. <laughs> they're just debating some technicalities. Is because all, like right? Lit Pro versus it's a race versus this versus. But Barstow is that that's like that that it used to be called. That's like the one that's in like the arena kind of, and it goes, it used to be like a dirt racetrack, right? Oh, that's Prim. No, 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 no. There's one in the high des that's like Bakersfield. They went to Barstow, not Bakersfield. I don't know, dude, but that's, there's, there's something, some weird high des track Justin would know. There's not even a friggin', is there even a, I don't know, man. They probably did the Kiefer challenge and like turned left at the dishwasher. And I mean, good. Yeah, like I don't know, man. You're asking me the questions I don't have the answers to. I wanted to go. They told me I can't go, so it's sad. Well, they told you you couldn't go. Well, I mean, it, it is what it is. Wow, sad. boycott. I know. Sad boycott. Sad. Luke Sullivan, number eleven, in e your heart. No, LCQ. number eleven on the track. Wheelin, Balzer, Balzer, D Mills. Dangles. Hollaback girl. All of, God, I was going to do the nicknames every time. Just kidding. Sad. But then I didn't know what to do. I was like, uh, 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 450 LCQ uh, uh, coming up. Remember when you chugged that water that one time and you got gawked the mic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we do. Logan Lightsell LCQ challenge. Dude, okay. S someone's got to talk to Steve. He can't be putting in these heavy hitters in the real LCQ challenge. Chill down. Okay. Just saying. I'm All right, here we it. go, folks. It is time to drop the gate in the LCQ final qualifying race of the night. Before we drop the gates in Denver, here we go. Off and running. Blake O'Brien's got a great jump out of the middle. I think he maybe timed the gate. He's going to get to the corner first. Does he control it? Oh, oh slides no. out. Rockefeller, whole shot. Balzer's right there with him. And who's Balzer that right behind? That's Seth Carr also mixing it up. So it's a 250 East Battle Royale in this 450 LCQ right now. Balls are going to hit the pole again. Let's see if it happens. <laughs> well, we all know. Off. Oh, he goes way outside this yeah, time. Yeah, which far coast away from it as he could this time. Is the best coast. Wants to get that easy triple on, though. Going for some. The car quad up. Woo! Oh, yard sale. He gone. Straight blew his feet off. And look at this. Balls are with a huge lead. Adams third. Hollenbeck fourth. Whelan still in second. And these guys are trying to make it, but just like that, Luke Sullivan right there on fourth place in fifth. And you see the top five coming through the whoops right there. Oh, oh who's that going down right there? Adams. Yep, that guy. Trent Adams going down, so Sully gets into a transfer spot because of that. 11 Machine has now moved up to fourth. So balls are wheeling, hauling back Sullivan, your top four. Skiarbo, Davis, Heckman, and McPherson behind them in the five through eight range. So... I think Sullivan's going to be probably okay to start charging forward here. He's not got any real pressure behind him. And instead, he can focus on putting the heat on Garrett Hollenbeck. Hollenbeck's still there right behind Bryce Whelan. And Balzer's leading this thing, your fastest qualifier, who DNF'd the heat race 
from a bad gate pick is out front. Oh, ball, a wheeling mistake. And here comes Hollenbeck trying to close that gap down. It was really close there, but not close enough yet for Hollenbeck to make the pass. Our front four, though, are gone. Big gap back to now Devin Davis, who's about four seconds behind them. Um, yeah, man, look at this. Our top four right here, all in the whoops at one time. And as uh, Kellen said, the huge gap. You see that Cowie in the background of the shots. That's going to be Devin Davis, who's in fifth. The thing about this top four right here, yes, they're all very close, and anyone could win this thing. But that doesn't really mean anything. If any one of these guys goes down, even a tip over, I feel like they'll be right in striking distance for Devin Davis. But for sure, a fall off, they are going to lose that. Uh, transfer position and they're going to be on the outside looking in we're only two minutes into this race lap a third lap is only about halfway through but these guys are all holding on so look at those small mistakes balls are tripled yep. to the outside off the track now it's a drag race here same line double quad quad balls are getting passed Oof. up the inside and Whelan's going to take it over and now he is your race leader in this 450 lcq yeah Whelan makes the move into the race lead and now Balzer is going to do a little bit of the chasing here Sullivan's now up to third. He got around Hollenbeck about the same point in time as the lead changed hands up at the front. Go back to fifth, and it's Schiabro now trying to close this gap down as Hollenbeck makes a little mistake at the end of the whoops. So our front four, like you mentioned, they would still have a bit of a gap as Whelan lays in fastest lap of the race at a 58-8. And <laughs> I feel like Balzer has seen that 58-8 go on the board and go, no, 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 so no one can have a faster lap time than me. I got to get it back. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where these guys, I feel like a lot of times some of the top guys, I mean, maybe he doesn't even know what's going on, but it's just like lap time competition sometime, right? These two, they're like, okay, let's do this. Oh, you're going really fast? Let me see if I can go really faster than you. <laughs> can I, <go> really <laughs> I said that on purpose. Words Ooh. are hard, but Whelan, so our rhythm sections, Whelan cases that almost gets ran into the back of by Balzer. Balzer actually not able to get as close as possible the way Whelan had to single over that last inside thing. Balzer, though, pushing very, very hard. And you see just the corner speed he's entering with. It seems like he means business here. Ooh. Whelan has a little bit more speed, but Balzer has... Oh, not any corner speed because he's front down end. on the ground and he yep. got front end locked and he's still there top four is still the oh same. Whelan just case the finish line jump and balls <laughs> is going to make the pass anyway makes so, the pass and the Hollenbeck weird spot and yeah Hollenbeck has caught enough. these guys Skiaba by the way is up into fourth so down went Sullivan okay. Sullivan has got to do the charging now from sixth D Davis and Schiavro going at it. Let's see if D. Davis goes for the pass. No, not quite just yet. This is our final transfer spot battle, though. Oh, I like that move, too. I've seen Devin Davis come up the inside of people uh, in that same corner uh, multiple times tonight. He's just kind of likes to turn down there. You don't need a lot of speed. Look at that mistake. D. Davis has to move and still tries to get the double. Ends up causing him a costly mistake as well. So he's actually going to lose time from where he just was uh, after that mistake from Squiddy. So Squiddy's got to try to hold on to that. But yeah, D. Davis likes to cut down in that corner. He's cutting down, and you don't really need to have a lot of speed in because those guys are just going on and then not even jumping all the way off. So keep an eye on that. Uh, Devin Davis able to show a wheel to those guys while also uh, being able to make a move. But look at this. White flag is out. Devin Davis coming across was still a pretty big gap. Yeah, and Sullivan, final transfer. Sullivan went down again. He's now eighth, so it's going to take a little bit of earth moving to make this happen for the 11 machine who just last week, I believe it was, finished second in the main event at Philadelphia. So a tough break for the 11. Back out front, it is still wheeling on the 31 ahead of Balzer. Balzer doing the double across the corner. I like that line a lot, especially when you follow it up with a quad. I don't even know where you go after that. Quad, quad, triple. That's gnarly. Those guys are doing that line. That's ridiculous. And uh, yeah, Schiabro is just trying to hold it on a little bit deep there. A little deep. Tiny bit short right there. D. Davis coming into your living room in the background. Mm. And uh, he's going to get it as close as he can. But I think Skiarbo's got this barring a late mistake out of the 61. One Down the start the straight. It is Whelan taking the win. Balls are second. Hollenbeck third. Skiarbo is there. Davis is going to get close. He's just going to have to hope for cuts, I think. Oh, and he yeah. tried to rip the corner and it didn't work. So yep. it's going to be Skiarbo. Going to the main event, four and a half seconds up on Davis, Adams, Parks, Carr, Heckman, McPherson, Hardelov, Rockefeller, Sullivan, Mills, Larson, O'Brien, Parker. Going home early tonight. 
you're at mile high. <sighs> Bummer. That's some big, big old names down there in that list. It certainly is. Shout out to the ones who quit. You know, didn't even quit. He probably did. Crazy. No, he did not. Last one to finish. You know, sometimes you just gotta ride it out. You gotta see it through till the end if you want to become a champion one day. And that's what he's doing. Yep. Yep. That's uh, the way she goes. That is Whelan, Balzer, Hollenbeck, and Skiabro confirmed going to the main event. Penalties did not change our top four positions. And the fields are now set for tonight's main events in Denver. 250 SX West. Round nine of their championship coming up next here on Start Your Systems TV. And it is going to be 15 minutes plus a lap of absolute chaos to see whether Seth Shirley can become the all-time 250 Supercross wins record holder or not. Probably, honestly. Uh, and then we're going to start talking about... Did we already do Mount Rushmore? You did on Twitter, right? Yeah. Did you like my picks, by the way? Did you have any qualms with them? Basically? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it was more me getting annoyed by looking at the uh, the replies. The s it's mm, it's also just subje the, the subjective the intelligence so. challenge. What would you say? It's subjective. So if someone has a different opinion, like whatever doesn't really matter that much to me. I hate that you're like a real life media guy too and you're not just tweeting about dirt bikes all the time. Okay. Replies. Go down until I see a Grant Harlan argument. By the way, for those asking, if anybody cares, my Mount Rushmore of MX Simulator that I picked, which is what I think, it's not necessarily the truth, is Tyson Fresquez, Alexis LeClaire, Braden Carter, and Hunter Root. I really wanted to put JS4. I really wanted to put Jesse Mullins on there. I thought about Brian Haskell as well. Can't the reason, cheat. The reason I put Hunter Root on over the rest is to me, he's like he's like the James Stewart of MX Simulator. He was maybe the fastest person to ever play this game. Yeah. I I, I mean, I agree. I think with your list, I think you'd have to give me a name that, that gave me... You would have to give me another name. Braden Carter's it. Tyson's it. LeClaire... I mean, the only other way you could say that that you're replacing, I guess, uh, maybe Hunter Root or Leclerc. Who's got the most outdoor titles? Leclerc. Leclerc. He has five. Root has one, two. So one? the only person you replace Root with is give me a, give me a good answer of someone who maybe the stats are there, or you give me someone that that uh, pioneered the game. Especially like it's Mount Rushmore. Yeah, you know, Brian it's founding Haskell. fathers. I don't know. Are they even all presidents? They are. Yes. Well, no, because I thought you could throw like a Ben Frank or something on there. Someone that like did something important or like, I don't know. You got to be, you could be like a pioneer. So if you were talking, I don't know, I wasn't even around that much, but like, who was like, who was like the first video game creator, right? Or like you throw a checkers on there. Or, sure, but or I'm a talking Barrington about just player, or like the racers. Yeah, if you're doing racers, then you know, but if it, if it's racers, then there's that. But or it's like a content creator, you know, like I don't know, I wasn't around super, super early, but uh Puma or you know, like Kawasaki's videos, but he wasn't that big. He's just what got me into it. But like there's people that are legendary from then. But if you're going racers, then really the racing scene didn't really start until what, twenty eleven was the first year of RF? Well, 2009? 2010 was the 10. first Moto Option Supercross Championship. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of it. And Brian Haskell won the first two ever and won way more than anybody else, which is, again, why I thought about putting him on the list. It was between him and, and Hunter Root or, or Jesse Mullins, maybe to me, because Jesse won three outdoor titles in a row. No one had ever done that, and he won a lot of outdoor races. He didn't win as much indoors, but he was he was a trendsetter. Jesse? Yeah. Yeah, but he's... You, yeah, so you can't you blacklist yourself. He, he, yeah, he, you know, you're a cheater. You ruin your legacy. It's kind of the same thing. Like, that, like I didn't want to include Rush either, which I wouldn't have anyway. But he again ruined his legacy. He key shared while being 450 points leader. Like that's on you, bro. <laughs> yeah. You basically just tarnished your own legacy by doing it. So, 
How do you feel? Know. How do you feel about uh, steroids in the Hall of Fame? I I mean I don't really care. See, but so this is what I'm saying about Jesse's situation. The amount of stuff he did before he screwed up is what almost makes me want to do it because like mm. Barry Bonds was a Hall of Famer before he did steroids. He did steroids and it ruined his legacy. But he was a Hall of Famer before he did it. Like it was gonna be a Hall of Famer regardless. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. You had it, but you ruined it. It's more of like a, but it's worse than like a PED type of thing. All it's right. like a. Let's get back to this. Aaron though, Hernandez. We are going racing. 250 main event is off and running here in Denver. Seth Shirley up the inside with Hayden Stevenson, and Shirley is down in the first turn. He got hit from behind by a couple guys. I don't know who even got the Design Lab Co. hole shot, but Stevenson has got the lead. We didn't Spies, even make Heilman. picks, but we will next race. So Stevenson Oh, big Heilman. crash out of third. What I wanted to see, though, this is the championships locked up. This is the battle for second and third in points, separated by one, two, two points, I think. Two yeah, points. between Stevenson so and Heilman. You're whoever right. catches this dub out of these boys is going to be the new second place, uh, you know, series leader. Get that uh, bonus at the end of the season, you know? Nice little nice little thing. But Stevenson leading speech and Heilman in third. Michael Mudd straight through the LCQ, riding around in fourth. So what a great start to this 250 heat so far. And that top four I just listed right there is separated by a giant pack by about 10 seconds to a giant pack to the rest of the field. Yeah, and I think it's already set early in fifth. So these guys have got to go now and get away and put as much of a gap on the one dub as they possibly can. As Stevenson leads at the end of lap number one from Spies, Heilman, Mudge, and Shirley inside of the top five. So here we go. Over the tabletop, Stevenson goes in the race lead. Spies, a mistake. Heilman's closed up behind him, and Heilman hits him and lays it down. Shirley is going to go around the 49. He's up into fourth. And will he lose another spot? He's side by side with Vanderkoy. Dooley's. And they're going to jump into the next section together, but it looks like Heilman <laughs> will retain that position. It was just a little baby one. Shirley already going to work on Jake Spies for third as he's going to quad up alongside oh, of him and cut back him. up underneath is the pass, and he's got it. Shirley with a great move right there. Wow, those two lines almost came together uh, as Shirley wanted to go to the inside, but uh, Spies decided he was going to go outside. They crossed lines late, almost came together, but they're staying up, and look at this. Shirley with a oh, crazy down. move. Spies down in the whoops behind Shirley. Shirley up the inside, makes a pass on the wow. outside, just gets a better drive. Mudge not able to do it. Oh, Too hard, sharp of a line there. It takes down Mudge. Uh, just tips over, though, and now Shirley making moves all the way up into second place. Stevenson trying to get away as fast as possible, and uh, maybe he'll have, have a little spoiler between him and Heilman, and he'll get that, but Shirley is on. Uh, Ripper right yeah, now. He is cooking right now. Four and a half seconds down. Step on. Off. Let's see if he triples in here. He's no, going he's gonna... for a record too, right? So yeah, triple, he's double trying to, to become, the inside. Become the all-time 250 Supercross wins holder. Look at the way he flows. Wins. Dude. The, no, way he, he the way he flowed around that triple, inside, double, quad, quad, like he just is never on the brakes really. Yeah, he is flowing around this track. Nobody has ever won more than 10 250 Supercross main events in crazy. the 15 year history of Moto Option Supercross, which sounds crazy, you're right. But most of these guys do move up and uh, there is the point out rule regardless. You can't defend a title after a second year of winning it, which uh, has forced a lot of these guys out. Shirley defended this title, won it, and he's forced out next year regardless. Ooh. So this is his last couple chances to get it done. And he seems fired up to do it. 59 flat last time by. He is flying that, around this track. That line through the sand is unreal, Kellen, that we just saw that double over. We saw someone or we saw him attempt to do it earlier and actually fell, but now to see it on board while he's throwing heaters down, he's going to make a big mistake here. But look at uh, Stevenson holding his own up front, even though Shirley dropped a heater, still holding on to that lead. And did the, the points change a little bit recently, right, for pointing out in Sim or no? I, I don't know about Sim, but well, in real life. Real life yeah. for sure. Because I'm thinking, I hand up right now, think that the point out rule is stupid in real <laughs> life and in sim. Especially sim because the bikes are just totally different. Some people just don't like to ride them. It's not about prestige or anything. So I think it's stupid because I was going to say, what are the chances that the two most winningest are racing right now? You know? Yeah, no, it, I just, it's crazy. 
I don't know, dude. I mean, I JS4 think is still tied with them, yes. But point out right. rules are stupid. I mean, it is stupid, but honestly, Bro. I would almost disagree with you and flip it the other way. I think it's better for Sim because otherwise, you just have a lot of these really fast guys sandbagging the 250 class all the time instead of racing Leclerc and Carter and all that because they don't think they can beat him. True, I do think that, but then I do think the 250 class might get to the point where it's so, so stacked. And you already see people moving up. Oh, I'm riding the 450 outdoors, even though you're a 10th place guy in 250 Supercross because you just want to ride that bike. It's a little bit better outdoors, whatever. Yeah. And I think this is almost I think just you can a race 250 thing. outdoors, by the way. I raced 250 for one coast, and I was like, these bikes are freaking terrible. Put hmm. me on the 450 for the rest of my career. Like, I don't know. The, it's just, uh, just different. Some people prefer, and they never want to move up. I think you should be able to do what you want to do. Yep. Well, Seth Surly is all over Hayden Stevenson for the race lead. We've got 10 minutes and a lap left to go, and Shirley wants to make this pass happen rather quickly, it would appear. Down the inside for the race lead. Thought about it, but Stevenson holds it on around the outside as they go over the Supercross triple. Stevenson looks like he's having a good time in this battle, but how long will it last? He's going to have to check up and double or roll off that to double-double. Shirley realized that was happening and checked up as well. Really good race instincts there from the one. And now, Stevenson gets the quad and Shirley does not. That's going to give a slight little advantage there now to Stevenson as he inches away. Yeah, I mean, Stevenson just fighting, though, with this half a second gap is a lot different from the four, five, six second gap that he started with. So, Shirley putting a lot of pressure on. I don't really, the way he's riding right now, only six minutes into this race, I don't really see a, a way that this doesn't go Shirley's way unless he completely... Uh, explodes himself stevenson just needs to do his best though put in the great finish put in a great strong ride and if you finish second without going down and you lose by five seconds here it is better Quads than that over stevenson responds Cuts squares down. off the corner he's still side by side with him into the next uh, corner down here shirley trying <sighs> to launch it into the triple face stevenson's trying to take it back and he'll get to the inside he's going to go over table and have to oh, check I up and like double it. double shirley to the outside Will he triple on here? No, he's going to double in. They're still side by side, but Shirley's going to put a nose out. Stevenson's going to triple, triple back alongside off. and retake the lead because Shirley jumped off the track. What a great fight we're having in Denver. Yeah, Shirley jumped off the track there late. Stevenson able to make the move. Almost jumped the corner inside. Going to be uh, curious to see if he's going to get cuts for that. That's uh, for sure a sketchy spot right there that you can instantly cross two time gates. Um, and get yourself penalized, but right now Stevenson's still hanging on to it. And Shirley, man, Shirley is just ripping though. After making that huge mistake there, trying to battle, uh, still right on his heels. This is the exact same thing we saw. Does he go for the jump across the sand? He does not. He's not going Why for that not? anymore now nope. that he's close. And Stevenson made a mistake. Shirley to the inside retakes the just lead. Like Stevenson that slap. fights it back again, but I think it's going to be a slight advantage this time for Shirley. Ooh. So now the question is can Stevenson respond? and come up with a pass of his own to make this work. He's going to try to triple to the inside. No, Shirley defends. Stevenson still gets the double in, but does not get the quad right there, and that's going to put Shirley at a big advantage because he quad doubled to the inside, and it might be goodbye time now for the one. Yeah, I think it's time for him to get on the gas and just kind of run away with this thing and show that uh, he was just getting slowed down a little bit by the battle and the pressure, but once he's out front putting down his hot laps, he's going to... Uh, make a huge gap here unless we see something big from Stevenson, but he's not giving up just yet But that gap is slowly slowly growing so I'd be interested to see the lap time that we have see Seth Shirley uh, Drop the next time they come around the checker flag. He now has completely clear ear air Maybe one or two more lappers there. He is jumping the sand quadding up again, and yeah, this is his race to lose right now He is he is on rails at the moment. Yeah, he went 59-1. Lap traffic is also going to start coming into play a little bit here, so it's not going to be as easy for him to run a burner, but certainly cooking one up right now if he can finish this thing off. Stevenson is doing his best to keep it close, then a big gap back to Heilman. So that is now, I believe, Stevenson and Heilman tied for second in the championship as it runs. If uh, they stay this way, they would have to duel each other at the showdown for second place in the championship. How about this ride for Michael Mudge, too? I don't think we've seen Mudge nearly at all this year. Shows up the last couple weeks and now battling inside the top five here in Denver. A good start in the main event. Has got himself running up front and holding on to a good P4 ahead of 
Tyler Shields. So top five really spread apart right now, but uh, good on them, man. All of them got good starts and have made it happen for them early in this race. I mean, Mudge and Shields, too, correct? Made it through the LCQ? I think so. And they're running yeah, four or five right now. Mudge ran the handguards. Yeah. He got a shout out in chat. I mean, Furtado and Emmett Sun made it through the LCQ as well, I think. Yeah. I could be wrong. Uh, for no, sure, Furtado, Mudge did. Furtado made it through the heat because he led a lot of the heat okay. race, but yeah. For sure, though, Mudge made it through the LCQ, and this guy's just riding easy fourth right now, just absolutely ripping. And just sometimes it's just you get it together. Maybe he needed that little bit of extra track time. He was playing more recently. Some people got up to go eat dinner or do whatever. He's just been cruising, riding the track nonstop for the last two and a half hours, and he's going to go and try to try to drop a top five in this race, probably his first top five ever. Oh, I hear Shirley went down, and it is true. Stevenson has retaken the race lead with five minutes to go. All right, now we got a bit of a race. As Stevenson's trying to get around lapped riders who are just not moving out of the way. Finally rips that inside rut and will make that move. Now Shirley's going to have to deal with them. He's going to take an alternate line, almost comes together with that lapper, and does go down. So Shirley goes down in the sand. I don't know who that is, the lapper that's refusing to move right there, but he made life tough for our leaders, and now Shirley's got a real big workload here to accomplish. Even Heilman went by. Heilman moved up to second. He's seven seconds off the lead suddenly. Yeah, that's crazy because Heilman, we were saying before, had a huge gap uh, up to second place position. Now he's cruising in second behind Stevenson, actually a lot closer than he was before. So I, uh, Stevenson must have had a couple issues because I think Howman was like around 10 seconds back, not four. So uh, Howman moving his way up. Howman now, he's in this championship battle with Stevenson. They're going for who can finish second overall on the season. And Howman's trying to make the moves. These guys are, are battling each other. They are not teammates? Even no, though they Finca like and Sparko, yeah. Finca and Sparko, they look the, like teammates blue and white and white and blue and yellow they're looking good week in and week out but <laughs> man look at these guys Heilman chasing 4.1 seconds at the stripe Seth Shirley coming across 8.7 seconds at the stripe uh in third so after I told him the only way that he could not win is if he throws it away himself yep so he's got that speed now it's Heilman and Stevenson left to decide <clears throat> this at least for the time being we still have three minutes Plus a lap left to go, and Shirley is going to try to put on another Hail Mary charge. We've seen it a couple times this year, and he certainly did a great job to close up in the first place to get in a fight that he could battle for the race lead, but he's eight seconds off it right now, and he's not really hitting his marks. Every time we come back to him, little mistakes here, little case there. Not really the Seth Shirley we've expected to see throughout the season showing up here tonight. It's a little bit off, I feel like, for the one. I mean, yeah, we were talking, can he go completely undefeated? I still, uh, actually, I don't know, 12 and a half minutes into this race. Coming across the line, they're running about a minute lap time, so we're going to get probably four more laps is what I would guess. But yep. 59, he dropped a 113, and then now he's back to a one minute. So that was more than the fall off the last time he had a bad lap. But he's not only going for his still East Coast undefeated season, He's West. going for West Coast. What? West Coast? West Coast. <laughs> yeah, we're in Denver, bro. West Coast. West Coast undefeated season, but he's going for the freaking all-time 250 win record. So you got to go out and you got to you gotta get these wins. You got to get two is what I was hoping for. Yeah, well. Submit yourself away from those guys, but he's just not looking like it. Is the pressure getting to him? Is that something he even cares about or just does he not like the track? Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. This but is going to be interesting he's because not looking good. if he does not win this, like you said, it sets up a battle between him and Balzer while Balzer's trying to win the 250 East title again to see who will become the all-time 250 wins holder when we get to Salt Lake City next week. But as we come down to the final minute and a half, Hayden Stevenson has not walked this thing away yet. Heilman is still pretty darn close. Just made a big mistake right there. And then Shirley's knocking on the door of Heilman from behind that. So this is a good race that might tighten up down the stretch. We have oh, only got place. five Bobble. seconds. And yeah, there it is. Shirley got by. Shirley threw. Heilman jumps right in behind him. You can see how deep some of these sections on this mm. track are getting. As Shirley lays it down again, Heilman will go back by. And now it looks like it's truly a battle for second, but Shirley's going to get right back through. 
Yeah, I mean, this race is not over. You have Stevenson still up front. He's rode a great, almost flawless race so far, but he's probably going to be able to hold on to it. But this race is not over, and we're going to keep watching until it is. So they're going to cross the stripe with two more laps left to go. So it's going to be interesting. That's a lot more time that Stevenson is going to have pressure on his shoulders. Shirley in the second. Heilman behind him. Uh, Shirley now has one more lapper to Stevenson, and then a little bit of clear air. Can he throw down some hot laps? This is when it all matters. Five seconds between him and the lead. Will he be able to do it? Yeah, and you can tell Shirley is up the intensity once again. So now, if you're Stevenson, do you lay it back a little bit and try to ride safe with the potential that Shirley really burning it down these last couple laps might get on you at the flag? Or do you just try to stick to what you've been doing and putting these good, strong laps together as he goes for the quad there? Oh, he's going to quad up again. He's going to jump off the track slightly. Almost Ooh, land on almost. a lapped rider and have to roll into the corner. And Shirley sees that opportunity open up just a little bit more now as Stevenson is only a few seconds ahead of him coming to the white flag. Yeah, see, he, he saw it. He knows it. His spotter's in his ear telling him exactly what happened, exactly what the gap is changing to, just like we are 2.5 seconds now as it was five seconds last time around. Oh. So this is really important here for Steven to hit his marks. And answering your ke question, Kellen, I think he just needs to keep riding the way he's riding. Don't pull back from that quad if you've been hitting it every single lap. Don't try to do a different rhythm. Do exactly what you've been doing every single time unless there's a crazy rut and it's something you stop doing. If you pull back, you lose your flow, you lose everything you've been doing, and that's when you're going to make mistakes. Oh, Shirley went down! And it doesn't even matter, and Heilman's back by him! Yeah, Heilman went back through. These guys have been in traffic the entire way, and this time it's going to fall away of Hayden Stevenson. He's got a few more turns left to go. And this time he doesn't go for the quad. He checked up and triple-tripled. Few turns left to go, and Hayden Stevenson's going to be the first 250 West Rider not named Seth Shirley to win all season long. Holy cow. This is a huge moment in this championship fight for second place and in the career of Hayden Stevenson in this game. Through the whoops, one final time, a little bit sideways at the end. Did not want to see that happen, but he's going to love what he sees right here. Final turn. Denver Supercross, Hayden Stevenson is your 250 winner here tonight. That's got to feel awesome for him. It's just like breaking up a perfect game or no-hitter in the ninth inning. He broke it down. You had two more what? races Surely to go. Shirley's all the way back to fifth. Holy cow, what's he doing? He's exploding. Luke, Timmy Briscoe was 12 seconds oh, back. Oh, he saw lays him. into. Is that Brune? Brune so, yeah, lays Brune into. Brune was who him. he was battling with. He just kind of secures that, I guess. And Shirley's going to get fourth. Wow. wow, that is a big shock. When he was battling for the lead much of this race, he doesn't even get on the podium. And his podium perfection is gone as well. He's not going to land on the box at every round this year. Wow. And he is frustrated with that. Alec Horn ends up in fifth. Got to give a shout-out to Timmy Briscoe, who we talked about at no point during this race, and he still gets on the podium. Timmy B. Well done to Timmy Briscoe getting that third place. And we got uh, Brun, Shields, Vanderkoy, Cepeda, and Arico rounding out our top 10. What a race this 250 main event was. Well, we came into it saying, hey, the championship fights are over, but the races are still going to be good, and that one certainly delivered. Yeah, I mean, Heilman gave us more of a show than I could have even asked for. Uh, Heilman being up there as well as Stevenson obviously taking home this win. But if it was one of these guys was in first and one was in eighth, it would have sucked. Top three the whole time, and then you have... Your championship leader undefeated coming into this uh, on the West Coast, coming back and forth, up and down, trying to play spoiler. And just like that, drops back to fourth. Surprise podium. Stevenson with the win. Heilman still with the great finish in second. This is still close going into the shootout. These guys can still battle for second in the championship. And sadly, Michael Mudge through the LCQ. Rode fourth for a long time. 17th. Down to 17th place. Sad. Sad. Very sad. But guess what, Michael? I hope you rewatch this. I hope your friends are watching right now. And I just want to let you know that we care. And we were rooting for you. We do care. MXS cares. MXS cares. And SYS cares. SYS cares too. All right. That is it for the 250 main in Denver. One more race to go. The 450 main event. Coming up next, and just as we talked about the history on the line in the 250 class, history on the line in the 450 class, 
one win separates Tyson Fresquez at the all-time leader in 450 Supercross wins. And for those of you at home that are like, what does that mean? This is this is the Jeremy McGrath of MX Simulator. This is arguably the greatest of all time. This Tyson is our Fresquez. 72 wins. A win record that many thought would be really tough to get to. Now, Seabold got pretty close. Got to 24, I believe. But Braden Carter's on the doorstep of tying it. Like, this is a big moment. Yeah, I mean... I feel Seven like it, years ago. I can't believe you just randomly found this out or someone pointed it out while we were one away and not be well, like, well, oh I talked God, about it with Carter it. last week and I just oh, forgot okay. that it was... But yeah, like this it's, this is seven years since Fresquez's last win. I think of the, I don't even think Carter was racing in this game. No, I don't even think ago. he owned the game or maybe even had heard of it at that time. And it's just crazy. You know, that was even we've gone through so many eras of, oh, the Mapper Keen and oh, this that have come and gone between this. Right. This is this is exactly like our McGrath. And then you also had the Villapoto and the Dungey and this before your Tomac or whatever. It's that long of an old of a record. And yeah, there's 17 rounds a year, but the way this game works, we just don't see that crazy dominance in Supercross. And it seems like Carter has done it in maybe less time. I'd have to look at the all-time total starts. That would be really cool to kind of look at. But Tyson Fresquez's domination, even during his time, it was like he's going to be the best ever. He's the best. You know, everyone just had that respect for him. And Braden Carter, I think, going up against those records, it's like, oh, he's just another one of those guys. Well, now taking over this record... He can say, I am the best ever to race Supercross in this game. Yeah. Which I think is super sick. Yep. That is... Uh, Tyson's still a goat, though. It's a big moment in this game's history if this does happen for Brayden Carter to tie one of the all-time greats top the Supercross wins list record. So can Carter get it done? Awood, let's ask you, who our Design Lab co whole shot winner tonight is going to be. No Hubbard allowed. No Hubbard allowed? I do think that Braden Carter is going to think that he has this, and he is a man of the people, and he won his heat, and got a good start there. I think a rare, that was sick. That was sick. Uh, a rare good start from Braden Carter. I think whole shot to dub, uh, post to post, what do you call it? Pull the pull. Pull the pull. Pull the pull, baby. I'm going to go our heat race winner, Frank Jackson, for the Design Lab Co. whole shot mm. win tonight. I like and, that. Uh, we're not doubting you, Hubbard, one bit. We just have to pick someone else other than you, the Michael Essey of MX Simulator. I got a, a Tyson, LeClaire, Carter, Root, uh, Rushmore from Kenwa. That's the same as yours, I think. Uh, baby Nyquil will be in Denver. He is stoked. Uh, with said Jesse, but we're blacklisting him. Then Womp Womp. Uh, Kellen, Jesse MX did not mean to take out Shirley. It was so hard to move. It happened. Tyson it was a dog. Right. Tyson wasn't real. Tyson's the best, but Braden Carter might be better. Here we go, folks. 28 career wins for Braden Carter, 29 for Tyson Fresquez. Is this the moment? It becomes a tie. Let's go racing in Denver. Good start up the inside. Is he going to hug it? That's Castellaneta and LeClaire good. side by side. Tharp runs deep. Braden Carter and no. Colby Eaglin <sighs> gets it. LeClaire quads up to the inside, and LeClaire is your race leader. And Carter oh. down out of turn two. LeClaire got into him. Teammate on teammate crime. Just a mistake, though. Slid and cleaned him out. Barely. Carter down. We're going to have to see another hero ride. Can we get a 15th to first from Carter? Who knows? We'll see how far he actually drops. Kellen is going to be checking that for me by the time he comes back he'll yeah, know well, where he uh, is because then the names are moving all over yeah, the place Car he, Carter was 15th when he got up he's now 13th up to 11th know. it Jeez, looks like just Biz. got around Colby Eaglin he's fast so there is a fight going on back there Noah Bendis is second Balzer our fastest qualifier out of the LCQ gets a good start he's third and Castellaneta in fourth as Bendis is going down and he brings Castellaneta with him so balls are up to second going into third looks like is that Schiabro I believe and Jeremy Smith also <laughs> moving by as we got guys getting sideways. Scarborough in a third. KS4 matches his number. He is now fourth. And Eaglin rounds out the top five. Carter 17th as they come around to complete lap one. Yeah, I think that was uh, Chase Blakely spinning around at the end of the whoops, uh, getting just kind of tugged around. Colby Eaglin almost made a mistake in the sand, but Colby Eaglin off to a great start here. 
running top five right now. This field already kind of a little bit spread, it seems, so far throughout the top five, at least. Everyone kind of just chasing a little bit. Oh, oh here Leclerc, we go. Leader down. Leclerc is down. Balzer to the lead. Jeremy S Balzer making mistakes. Uh, Jeremy Smith was going to be making a pass. There's probably a three-person battle right here for second. Yeah, Leclerc got up in front of him, and Schiavro moves back around JS4. Look at that. So this is a good little fight here. Two, three, four, five on your screen. Leclerc, Schiavro, Smith, and Eaglin bringing up Caboose a little bit right there. Carter has now moved up to 15th as we'll keep an eye on him and the charge through the field for the number one ride. But this is a fight that continues to develop in this early runnings of the 450 main event. 2.6 second lead already for Balzer. He's trying to lay it down out front. Interesting spot where Leclerc went down and he didn't fall off the bike. So I just imagine maybe front slide trying to get to that inside doubling into the rhythm section must have been the way that the seven machine lost his lead. Yeah, I mean, he must have just had a little spin out or a case or something like that. So. Uh, just kind of a bummer uh, for him. That's such a weird spot. It seems like for him to crash, but yeah, he must have lost lost something there. But Leclerc, I mean, he's getting back up, and he's a big line guy, so I think he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be a good person to kind of uh, keep an eye on here. I think that one second gap for Balzer is not safe. When you got Leclerc right behind you, uh, that's a scary thing to kind of have. But look at the, that uh, gap back to Squiddy though. Squiddy's not really letting him go, and it didn't really seem like he had that crazy amount of kind of speed in the heat race. Maybe we didn't really see him. Now, Schiavro, I thought, was actually pretty good in his heat. So he has been feisty here tonight. Really strong performance from the 61 machine. And we'll see if he uh, keeps it rolling in this fight with Leclerc. Jeremy Smith under attack from Colby Eaglin for fourth. And they both get that quad over Eaglin a little Ooh. bit deeper right there. Yeah, Smith with a little scrub there, but Eaglin with a better line in the corner there. These guys side by side. No one really doing that bounce line that I feel like maybe the top one or two guys are doing, or if they're just not really needing it. I feel like so many more people are kind of hitting that single before that. Uh, look at that triple on to the outside, that differing rhythm section. It gives different people a lead at different times. Smith tripling to the outside, Woo! though, doesn't get moved up. The inside Squiddy was trying to pass him right there, uh, but not able to make it work. Eaglin, I mean, uh, everyone looks the same. Yeah, this is... Uh Quite the fight still going on for fourth place as they go through the whoops. Smith just battling it out heavy with Colby Eaglin, and they still can't swap positions just yet. So Balzer is still leading this race, and it's a 3.7 second lead, 58-6 last time by. Fastest slap of the race for Rasmus Balzer. And talk about Seth Shirley not getting the all-time 250 wins record. This is the man he's going to have to beat next week in Salt Lake City to try to at least get the title to himself. But Balzer wants it as well. They're still both on 10, 250 Supercross wins, and Balzer now looking for his first 450 win. Jeremy Schiabro has shown up here in Denver. He is putting the heat on Alexis Leclerc in a battle now for second place and just not letting the Frenchman go right on his rear fender the entire time. Are, are you surprised, I mean, by one Squiddy's pace able to keep up with Leclerc that we didn't really see too much in the heat race uh, or by Balzer, just his sheer, he seems like he's able to hold on the lead, if not slowly extend it. Like, I mean, Schiavo, like I said, in the heat race, I thought he looked pretty solid, so I'm not too surprised by his pace, but his consistency is really good right now, uh, doing a really solid job of keeping Leclerc honest and making him work for it. And then Balzer, I mean, he was our fastest qualifier, and he DNF'd in the heat because he landed on the pole that's, from the race I lead, guess that's so, true. You know, we never really got to see. He could have probably easily walked that heat away and given us a show of what we were going to expect. Oh, my God. Event. Yeah, like <laughs> he's doing some gnarly stuff, different option lines, quadding this. I don't think quad, I've seen quad. that. Quad, oh, uh, quad. He could if he single, wanted. Yeah, to the inside. That's fast, dude. That's This looks like a qualifying lap right here. I don't know. I didn't really pay attention the first maybe two sections sand in the first one but th what i've seen right now looks like qualifying speed you are seeing a man on rails right now good run through the whoops i am very interested to see what this lap time uh comes to he even almost went over the bars right there but he still hit that corner fast 58 2 easy damn that's Called a it. good time right there i'm still not fast side of the race Leclerc 58 1 the yeah, time well, before that yeah, putting well. it down so that is uh interesting to see the lap time war going on you got Schiabro. Eaglin has now moved to fourth. He got around Jeremy Smith, who slipped back to fifth. Bindis in sixth. Jackson crosses the line in seventh. Castellaneta eighth. Hall ninth. And Blakely tenth. 
So you got Padani, Hubbard, Turley, Whelan, Rogers, and then Carter. So Carter's 16th. He's made not too much progress forward. And the reports in the chat keep suggesting that Carter keeps crashing. So that's most likely why we are not seeing the one machine a little yeah, bit further three times the field. So legs. Yeah, three crashes already for Carter early in this race. Six and a half minutes come and gone. So yeah, looking unlikely he gets number 29 here tonight in Denver. Might have to wait for Salt Lake City to match the record, but <laughs> he's dude, ripping he now. is flying right now. Look this is why this he's time. getting legs. Oh my gosh. How is he getting that still? Oh, this isn't good. Oh, that's cut just, the track a little bit. Yep. So, uh, it's this, crazy. I would be surprised if you looked at his lap chart after the race. This one might still be under a minute even with that, but if you looked at it and it was like every single lap was under a minute except for the ones he fell. Yeah. I mean, like it, like 58s, 59s, and then like 108s, 109s, 110s from falloffs. Yeah, he's, gonna, he's, he's flying he's right a little now. one minute. 58.3, <laughs> even with some mistakes cutting the track and everything like that. And he slowed up to cut the track. He didn't like rip past <laughs> yeah, it. That's unreal, dude. So he's he's certainly flying, and this is like you said, it's why he's probably having these legs legs off crashes. But uh, there's no reason not to though for him, right? Also, see how fast that bounce that step off bounce was. What is that? Like, how does he even read that? He plays first person. How do you notice somebody checks up like that guy just did? And yeah, well, was in the crash, rolling over, then checks, so you can cut under. This guy's an absolute Jeez, animal. He just OJ. Went four and a half oh on that. Oh my god! Can we just sit here all night and just talk about how cool Braden is? I mean, he's up to tenth now, and this is still going to be now, like a fifty-nine-four. He's making up some pretty heavy inroads on the front group because the leader has not been gaining too much time. Oh my balls! balls are only are... one point four up on Leclerc. We'll get back to this battle in just a second. I want to see Carter's lap time because it is cooked. Got through the whoops so fast. I think this is D Davis he's on now for Had the position. 59-2. How is that even slower? It's Caleb Hall, by the way. Uh, just because of that mess up with those lappers where he had to stop and jankily get onto that thing, you know? It's just like, it's crazy, though. But the crazy thing is, too, you look at the lap times of Leclerc and Balzer, and they're just Ooh, dropping the leaders lead, just way. like that. Yeah, Aww, change the lead. Balzer. Leclerc goes to the lead. 4.7 seconds back now is Balzer. So it must have just been a slide out or something weird. Leclerc, Castellaneta, Jackson, Carter, and Adam Holm are the only guys in the uh, sub one minute range at the moment. And Balzer just went down at the end of the whoop. So here comes Colby Eaglin and Schiabro. And that's Matt Cromie going a lap down. It's crazy. Uh, just like two laps ago, I was thinking, wow, Balzer's got this, whatever. And now I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow, Balzer has a lot of stuff behind him can he hold on to like a top four with how close Eaglin and Squiddy are right now and the way that his last couple laps are he really needs to regroup here but Eaglin just kind of holding on right now taking the line ooh small mistake right there by Squid Bro uh, right behind him I like the different lines that people are using we've kind of seen it evolve throughout the night as well just seems like the more consistent especially for the 450 guys yeah they can get the triple on easier from the outside but so much more consistent for them to roll the power on and just get the double quad quad smoothly. They know exactly what gear to be in. They don't really have to seat bounce, and they get through that easily in four jumps. Teammate War is about to commence in this battle for second. Balzer versus Eaglin for P2 on the track. By the way, Brandon Carter just went 57-4 in eighth. Uh, he is 24 seconds off the lead, so this is, like what? we said, still pretty hard. But, yeah, 57-4 lap time, fastest lap of the uh, race. For Carter, fastest he is, qualifier was a like a 58.0. Yeah, I think 58.2. I think something like that. I don't know, man. I think He's, it was 58.2, and then it got it. topped by those two. So or, that's yeah, unreal. There was a 58.02 and a 58.03, I think. And then the 52, 58.2 was the next three yeah. and four that was the best. And then you just go ahead and drop another six tenths. Why don't you coming through traffic? See, that line is way faster. Why is nobody doing it? It's probably really hard. That's why. No, so Bendis right here, I think. Uh, Lapter, Lapter, no, I should say. No, no it was. Oh, it was the Bin the no, Meister, as some people call him, mostly me, just now for the first time. <laughs> oh, Carter goes four and a half, three Ds deep, still gets the triple the inside. Dude. He might. What time? 11 minutes. seconds off the lead. No, he ain't getting He there. needs Leclerc to crash. He's getting 21 seconds off. I think he gets squid, bro. He's gained three seconds on the Claire since we first checked in a minute ago. 12 seconds. And this might be another absolute steamer with what he's putting down right now. He is fired up. 
and goes 57-5. Squiddy's so nine seconds four. ahead. I think he gets him in fourth. Yeah, maybe. 12 seconds back. Now he's... So Leclerc's going 59-3, and Carter just went 57-5. So he just gained two seconds that last lap alone. Like, this is obviously unsustainable pace, but if he keeps doing this, you never know. And that's Jeremy Smith down, so he's going to go to another six. another spot. That's why we watch these races. We're people. calling Brandon Carter gives us the goods. Oh, it's over. Oh, and he sucks. It's over. That outside line finally dug in, and he trampolined with the rear suspension over the bars. And I allowed mean, Bendis through, and Caleb Hall, I think, went by. That no, was Frank Jackson, excuse me. I'm surprised <laughs> Jeremy Smith did not go by. It's but, just uh, one of those things. You can, you can only do it so much yeah. with the way the track breaks down. We see that in real life. You see people pushing the edge, whether it's... Whether it's, I don't know, AP in Detroit, you know, last year, RIP. So sad. Uh, but, like, just something like that where it's, like, wearing down so much and you see everyone get away from the line except for one or two guys, and it bites that person. There's a reason you can drop 57.4, 57.5, but guess what? That three seconds lap doesn't really matter when you're going to go down. And it's really cool to watch, but... I mean, you just got to consistency. The legs off three times in a row doesn't really help him. Yeah. But guess who it does help? Balzer. I mean, he's had he's four leg off. Rushing. Four, four leg off crashes. That we know this, of. This whole race. And uh, so four leg off crashes is what? 40 seconds of lost time. He's only 29 seconds off the lead. So that just shows the pace that he's running and, and the ridiculousness that involves that. Because even with four crashes, he's still only 29 seconds off the lead. And, uh, yeah, so balls are starting to cook again. 58-6, 59-7 for Leclerc. Leclerc, at this point, it's more about navigating lap traffic, I'd imagine, because that's what's kind of bit some guys here tonight. We saw it in the 250 main event. We're 13 and a half minutes in, so closing stages of this one, six and a half minutes left on the clock. And really, for Leclerc, it is just about not getting caught up in the chaos around you as he goes around some of these lapped riders. Yeah, not going to lie, I was thinking that the two, this main was 15 minutes when I was kind of looking at the clock and how far he could get it. I think he easily like could have got Squid Bro, and it would have been close with the gap, at least, to how close he could have got to Eaglin. But those guys are riding great. It's just if he kept putting down that pace. Yeah, Leclerc with a, with a great ride here. He seems to have gotten through a good amount of lappers right now, and the way it works is you seem to kind of work your way through it looks like he's got a pretty big gap yeah at Leclerc's pace that gap shortens up but it looks like he's got maybe one guy in the whole next rhythm section uh and when there's 22 other or 21 other guys circulating out there I mean there's sometimes where there's two or three or four in one rhythm so if he can get him one at a time for a little while I think it'll be really easy for him especially as people get lapped more than once they start to be a little bit more respectful so hopefully no problems with Leclerc we hate to see any races get affected that way but right now Hitting all his marks, dropping good lap times as much as he needs to do. 59 O's will get it for you. That's a pretty much a heater lap time. Yep, so he's going to start working around. That's Blakely who is down. Another thing about lap riders, too, that we often see is you find him in clumps. You get a little bit of breathing space like he's going to have right here going around Tanner Rogers as a gap. And then suddenly he'll catch a group of three or four of them together, and that's where it becomes dicey. You catch one mm -hmm. at a time, they'll move out of the way nicely for you. Two... Yeah, usually they'll let you go. Three or four, they're in a dogfight of their own nature, and they are not as keen to just lay over and miss the opportunity to pass three riders at once. So that's where uh, Leclerc's got to be careful if he comes upon a group like that. And, uh, yeah, four-second lead still. It's not over. Balls have certainly been tightening it up slowly but surely these last few laps, and Leclerc is just trying to hit his marks lap after lap. Yeah, he's made a couple small bobbles off to the finish line, jumped off, kind of a weird bobble in the sand, and then coming after that triple right there. Dude. And it, it's fun when you see uh, when you see someone like Leclerc. Look at the board. <laughs> Are you serious? Fifty-six nine. What? Dude. Hey, what is he doing? After this race is over, everyone go to Braden Carter's uh, YouTube. No, Twitch probably. OG BPC and watch his replay because you need to we all need to go see exactly what just happened we miss it but maybe it'll happen again but it's almost like I kind of just want to sit here watch Braden's onboards <laughs> for the next couple minutes and then just keep an eye on the fact that Leclerc, Balzer and Eaglin are crushing it 
with the podium. Cast another fourth. Squid bro drop back. He to goes 56-8. He backs it up the what? very next lap with a 56-8. He wasn't even going fast. Dude, he was going pretty fast. Give okay, this is he's doing that. That's okay. That's slow. So he's gonna be like a 57. Oh, dude. Look this at that low gnarly. line there. Big bounce there. Didn't even touch the second one. Scrub. He's low gained, line here. He's gained eight seconds in the last four laps on the leader, by the way. Yeah, no offense, Squid Bro. You had no shot, <laughs> even when you were in fourth. Smooth quad there. Power to the ground. Triple the inside. Reese's perfect it. to the right. Lands in the rut. And now no. he's catching uh, Skiabro. Wait, okay. Just, I just want to see... Perfectly railed on that right high line. The track is broken into the perfect spot. Look how the whoops are broken down. He's ripping. <laughs> Look at the slows down. Oh, might have gotten hung up there. I'm predicting a 56-9. Back to back to back. Uh, Skiabro mistake. 57 flat. Okay. So he went 56-9, 56-8, 57 oh, flat. No, and Skiabro gives that. him the dookie. No, honestly, honestly, fair. Wait, you know why? You why? Because A1 this year. For what I thought was no reason, Carter later said Skiabro ran him wide. Carter teed up Skiabro gnarly while uh, they were battling for like ninth. All right, good. If so he hasn't Skiabro been got, got him back. If you haven't been, if you had, if he hadn't got him back yet this year, fair. Also, cast another down. Now Braden Carter's in the fourth. Um, Skiabro went down anyway. By the way, he okay. legs off because of that. Well, there's Castle, and that almost just landed on him after he framed that rhythm. All right, so. That's fair. I like... He was getting glazed. We were... There was a lot of glazing going on. Um, not even be mad when you're dropping lap times that are one point... Math. 1.2 1. <laughs> 1. seconds math. slower or faster than the fastest qualifier. Two seconds faster than your fastest lap you had on the books. It's crazy. Blair's still making a lot of mistakes, man. And it's Eaglin's <laughs> second now. Balls are... Has uh, completely dropped off this group. We still have a minute and a half plus a lap left in this race. And Leclerc is uh, through a little bit of lap traffic now. Eagland is 7.5 back. So let's see what happens. Is Leclerc going to hold on for these final few laps? He's got almost no lap traffic in front of him, too. That's going to help. But you never know, man. <laughs> these tracks have a way of biting guys late in the race. And it could get Leclerc again before this thing is done. Carter, by the way, I think fourth is the best he's going to get. 23 seconds off the lead. He's 13 seconds behind Balzer now. Just went up to 11, though, so Carter's probably some, running something stupid again. Yeah, that's they called you a M.2, one terabyte in chat. <laughs> I would think you're more of like a DDR5 RAM, you, random access memory. You can just pull that. Also a really good album uh, by the robot guys, Daft Punk. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was such, dude. Stuff. That was like my vibe, like 2016. That was like my life. Um, I think it was that year. Maybe 15. Anyways, Leclerc is unreal. Carter's unreal. Everyone's like, oh, all those fast lap times just to get freaking legs off and lose it. Yeah, but when you're literally going for an all-time win record, you locked up the title. You're already back, way back. Like, what else is there to do but to try to drop crazy, crazy heaters and get up there as fast as possible? Really doesn't matter, bro. You won the championship. He's probably going to be on the 125 next week. Dude, Leclerc. I think he will be. Leclerc missed the white flag by maybe a half second. That's It's still green terrible. flag, which means the white flag is not out. 20 minutes have come and gone. There's zeros on the clock, and Leclerc has two laps to go. So, little door of opportunity open for things to tighten up even that much more, just in case things get weird. Eaglin's still trying to do what he oh. can to keep it close. You got Balzer almost over the front door there in third. And here's Carter still trying his damnedest in fourth. 57-5 <laughs> last time by. He got flushed. That's such a Just big. keep doing it over and over again, man. It's ridiculous. That low line right there is huge. If you guys don't see, didn't see that, the way that he's able to ride on the very top of the ruts, you'll see that in outdoors, keeps you away from the chop inside of the rut. And it's just elite, Lots elite over. stuff. Yeah, he's dead. Um... But yeah, it's Castellet just. Castellet is going to go by. It's crazy. And nope, just Castellet. So Carr is going to pick it up in fifth. Spencer Turley for the championship? No, 25? he's. 25? Spencer Turley is in 
16th place for Spencer Turley. He's been moving on up. So for LeClaire now, he is on his way to <laughs> another win this He's year. He's riding like Ricky Carmichael or Jeremy McGrath when they would be out front by like 30 seconds. He like slowed up and then did like a seat bounce whip over the triple <laughs> just to show up like, like oh, I'm going to, you know, slow up and do this yeah, and just, just check up, hang out. It's okay. I'm only freaking 10 seconds ahead. He went from 10 to 7 this lap. Yeah, well, he's got this dub wrapped up. It was a uh, a smooth sail at the front of the field, really. Leclerc got the lead early and took off, and uh, he got into Carter in the second corner. I'm curious how Carter's going to feel about that post-race because uh, Carter had to do a lot of work after that happened. But for Leclerc, it's win number three of 2024. Alexis Leclerc takes the Denver Supercross and puts the seven machine back up on top as he tries to take over, or lock down, I should say, this second place in the championship. Go Colby back. Eaglin gets second. Rasmus Balzer looks like he'll lock down third, and Carter gets Castellaneta in the whoops on the final lap to get fourth place in this race. He doesn't care. He oh. wanted to win. Dude, how fast did he just hit that run? <laughs> that, is, that is the difference between these 450s, the longer racetrack, and these guys with elite speed is that corner speed. That was not seen anywhere in the 250 class. Giabro. <laughs> who uh, punted Braden Carter. As I said, though, fair. Maybe Carter deserves. punted him at A1, so turnaround's fair play in this one. But now they're even. Any more shenanigans is stupid. And Hubbard's going to cross the line. Seventh, eighth for Frank Jackson. And T Lang, last guy in the lead lap, will get ninth. Tenth for Padani. Eleventh, JS4. Bind is Holm, Turley, Blakely, Whelan, Pachone, Rogers, Tharp, Chromie, Hall, and Hollenbeck was our running order here tonight. Penalties have come in, and ooh, Carter, naughty dog. How much is that? How much is that? Eight? No, six? I can't see that from here. Would 6.4? He's getting close. 6.62 seconds of cuts for Brayden Carter drops him to fifth in the race. Frank Jackson has 3.9 seconds of cuts. We're getting the update from Awood getting closer to the screen. All right, 125, that's Turley. 3.73 seconds of cuts. And Matt Cromie had 4.88 seconds of cuts. <laughs> All right. Okay, we got to shout out Bryce. 5.7. Bryce Wheelan, 3.5 second, uh, second seconds of cuts. Three so. second cuts. No, you're not cheaters. You probably made a mistake. That one time that Braden jumped the inside of that corner, I bet you that was easily like a two second penalty yeah probably yeah. because the speed he was he tried and he tried to slow down it's the fact that those inside corners if you look at the bottom left of your screen the top of that last jump and that first yellow bale basically maybe even closer than that have the timing gates on it so when you cut across those it's like normally you average 0.3 seconds to get through there but when you get 0.1 that's when it's like a huge cut you had a 66 percent gain so yeah all right, that's going to do it for us here tonight in Denver. Kellen Brower, Andrew Wood in the Woo! studio calling the action. Alexis DeClaire and Hayden Stevenson get the wins tonight. Look, we said at the beginning of the broadcast, this is why we go racing. Championships were done. There wasn't really a thing to fight for for the top of the step, top step of the championship. But uh, we had two different winners we maybe didn't expect here tonight and had good racing with it. Yeah, I really like it too. And it's kind of fun that Stevenson and Heilman were kind of the close ones in the 250 class that were like all up there too with the championship uh, leader that already clinched, but it was like, it was really fun. You had at least had some other storylines, these guys going for win records in their perspective classes. So I like that too. And just the, the great racing in the 450 class as well. Um, always super fun. We had a little bit of everything tonight, maybe not as crazy LCQs as I would have liked, but it was good. It was great a good racing. night of racing. Good Way night better racing. than I thought. I thought it was going to be pretty, pretty bad. Okay, all right. Anyway, I was scared. It was going to be bad, and we got mid. Uh, Like a 7.5 out of 10. Mid plus? Mid plus. Or great negative. A minus. <laughs> a minus. <laughs> a minus, if there's an S tier. S tier, yeah. All right, then that's going to do it for us here in Denver. Round 16 of Moto Option Supercross here on Star Your Systems TV. Shout out to Andrew Wood for coming down, joining me this week. Great to have him back in studio. Uh, shout out to, to all back. you fans watching at home and the new subs we had here this week. Appreciate you guys for always supporting the channel. Big shout out to Race Factor Gaming and the Race Factor Gaming Track Crew for another great race and the Design Lab Co. for sponsoring our whole shot every single week. You guys make it all possible for us to cover this and we appreciate you guys. 
We'll be back next week, same time, same place, for the finale. Salt Lake City Round 17 of Moto Option Supercross coming up next week. You won't want to miss that one. Roustus Balzer and Seth Carr going at it for a 250 East Championship and some history still on the line for the 250 all-time wins list. And Braden Carter tries to match Tyson Fresquez. So we'll see you guys same time, same place next week here for Salt Lake City. For Kellen Brower and Andrew Wood in the booth, we'll see you guys then. So long for now. I'm gonna come. It's penis.